and welcome back to the Basil Brain Boombox. I'm here with my very special guest, Annie Peter, not Peters, as I've been saying wrong on this podcast for many months now. I'm so sorry. It's Peter. Annie Peter. Uh, or as I like to call her, uh, Eckhart Tolle's young lad. That's the <laughs> kind of uh, little jokey name I came up with. But uh, I met her, actually, I seen you at the first circle sessions I did. And mm. I remember you did this uh, great poem. I think it was Who Breaks Your Purpose. And uh, I don't know, it could have been, which one was the line where you manipulate time? Oh, that's Ashes of that a Dream. That is Ashes of a Dream, yes. Yeah. And the fire. And, and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. it was, um, I, just, I remember actually, I, I don't know. See, memory's so weird, but I remember I was outside and I was in this circle of people that I never knew before. And I was mm. like, I think I said to you, like you had the line of the night. And then I, because I rem- as soon as you said that line, it just, it just like burned onto my skin. I was like, whoa, what is going on? Yeah, yeah. And uh, so then yeah. that kind of had a, that, that was for my first impression. And then I've uh, seen you in little bits and places over here. And now that, that line actually um, has been inspired by something John Doe did. Oh. Like in one of his freestyle podcasts, uh, not podcasts, like just, um, I don't know, I think it's Circles as well when I saw him the first time. So he, he said something about like, um, happiness and past tense mm. or something because so, when you said when i, I said when i said that to that you one. um that's what you said you said yeah, that was yeah. inspired by john doe like right plagiarist, but like, you said you know. john doe as if uh he was some playwright or something because oh, i was no looking way. at you and i was like she are oh, you're obviously this massive literary head that's just like devouring books or oh yes that was inspired by willis stofsky yeah, sounds like john dunn or something yeah no, something like that like, yeah. uh, so that that's all interesting actually it was just that's the whole point of this scene is that uh, there's so many ways of being inspired and opportunities for for yeah. just it being instilled with new ideas uh, but we won't get too into that for the moment because we need to bring it back to the birth of Annie <laughs> Peter. I'm going to keep saying that name until it, because it's just so easy to say Peters for some reason. You can just say Annie. No. Annie, yes. Um, but because I, I think in the last podcast, see, I don't know, I've been taking notes for a while and the notes have kind of merged like from, because I listened to a podcast of notes and then I have my own notes. So I don't know where this came mm. from, but I think you might have mentioned that you were writing since you were eight. Yeah. Or something along them lines. Um, so... If you wouldn't mind taking us back to where where you began writing or where where your current incarnation, the first seeds of that might have been planted. Um, I thought about this for a while and I find it hard getting back to like there was like no, you know, like inciting incident for like now yeah, I yeah. started writing and like the I don't know, the writing career took off or something. It was more like very natural to me. I mean, you learn writing in school, right? Yes. I, don't, I don't know which, which age, like, is it like six or seven or some, something like that? I don't know. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, then you can write. It's like a tool that's given to you. It's like, you know, once you learn to speak, you, you know, you can yes, talk, you right? Have it. And then... So, and then, then some people don't talk a lot and then some talk a lot. I don't know. And like with writing for me, it was just very natural to, to journal. So I think it started with journaling just as a kid, you know, mm. Um. People keep calling me Peters. I'm sick of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, only joking. And um, yeah, then I started writing poems, just like the, uh, I don't know, like they weren't good. I was like eight years old. So, you know, <laughs> but um, I remember because you, you learn English from when you're nine um, in Germany, right? Oh. So I, I think like the first English poem I wrote when I was like nine years old, but it was like not very sophisticated. It was just like, you know, the rain drip drops whatever or something like that yes. and i enjoy really enjoying just like playing around with like the sounds of like drip drop and you know drop yes. and then like taking it from there um yeah so that's kind of the first memory where i was like yeah i wrote a poem mm. you know and then then i kind of never stopped but i had a quite a long break of writing creatively i think when i started studying mm. just because I was occupied with college work what were you the... studying well I start I started studying physics actually what <laughs> yeah such I, a German I, thing I, is <laughs> it? I don't know I don't know I flunked out of it in the second semester just because oh, it really man. wasn't my my um I don't know capability really like I do love physics sorry just on this point yeah. it's funny because of if course. you keep um I heard this quote if you keep asking why you either become a physicist or a philosopher. 
I think you should become a physicist because I don't think that's, philosophy yeah, yes. will lead you very, very far with that. The actual quote was just physics, but someone I yeah, talked to yeah. added the philosophy thing. I think they should take it out. Again. Yeah, because they so should, yeah. If you keep asking why, 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 you get to the fundamentals. Yeah, so like, I mean, like the context for that is that um, like I studied philosophy after I started physics, basically, anyway. Okay, so, yes. So, um, but... Um, I'm just much better with language than mm. with numbers. I'm actually horrible with numbers. So um, long story why I started studying physics. I'm not going to get into that now. But yeah. um, I do love like trying to get answers and mm. problem solving and analyzing things. Like, yes. I, I just do it anyway with wh whatever topic comes up. Mm. Um, and I think like in philosophy, philosophy was really necessary in a time where people didn't have um, like the necessary tools to do experiment like real you know yes um like material experience exactly or... um so people always ask questions you know like where we come from yes what's a human being what's Is going there a God? on yes. <laughs> what's going yeah, on yeah. <laughs> and um yeah i think nowadays you should you should turn to things that are actually there so if you have the experimental tools you know Mm. to get that because in philosophy it's um it's all premises and hypotheses and then you take it from there but what's the value of your, your like your first premise or hypothesis if you if you can't like check it in the actual mm. world like if you can't validate it you know yes so uh, philosophy let's say not that i'm uh <laughs> well versed in i mean I, i've dabbled like with youtube videos let's say but you could say yeah. Philosophy, like certain things kind of are on the borderline of philosophy and let's say reality. Like if I say, well, maybe there's an answer. Like what are numbers? Like numbers, mm. are they, we can say that they're real, but are they real? Mm. Like, but are they, or are they more real than anything yeah. in a weird way? It's like, there's, cause they're, they're at the borderline of sort of, they allow us to, to, to like, they're like a, they feel like a fundamental part mm. of the universe, but really they're an abstraction onto yeah. Onto the world in a way. Yeah, but but these things are like really interesting because, like you know, then it, then it's like what's real, right? Yes. <laughs> and yes. what's an abstraction? And then it's like all through our lens because numbers, like you could also say, you know, like the whole world is just a flow of information, right? If yes. you take it to like quantum physics or something, and then like, uh, can we even really understand what numbers are? Maybe we're already so lucky that you know we have a kind of a concept. But if you take it to like higher physics or mathematics, you can't visualize anything. It's yes. all in the in the you know the, the abstract what's, it, world. what's it called equations, or, or, yes. you know, and the, the graphs or whatever. But um, you can't actually, you know, like yes. logically deduct from like your normal way of thinking that like this should follow only like to yes. what's on the page. Kind like of for thing. example, if I wanted to uh, count up to infinity on this piece of paper. There's mm -hmm. no way I could ever do it. But I could actually write a little simple equation that would lead to an infinite series of numbers, let's mm. say. Like a yeah, function. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I could just, like, I can... Oh, you're a programmer, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know yeah. way more about this stuff yeah, than I Yeah, a little bit. Like, it's, like, it's kind of abstract in a way. Um, but, I forgot about that. Because um, the idea of infinity, um, there's this... Re this re now, not that I'm really that deep into it, but there's this idea that there's, there's bigger infinities than other infinities, in a weird way. Um, but I won't get too into that now. I'll leave that up uh, to the reader. But yes, so you were <laughs> you were nearly going to be the next Albert Einstein, but decided to be uh, the next uh, female incarnation of Eckhart Tolle, maybe. So what was the what was philosophy then like? Well, I think philosophy, philosophy literature were the first fields that really sparked my interest or, or passion kind of about, mm. about the subject and i think with philosophy i just want to understand things yes and um yeah that was it basically and then there were people who had already been thinking about a lot of things yeah <laughs> you could just read it yes. and um, then make up your own thoughts and oh, like in, in germany it's um it's cheaper to study as well you know so there's not so much pressure that you like i mean have to choose this because you know like you get this Other job ones, out so, of there yes. whatever so it's it's more people have the tendency to kind of follow what they're interested in mm, and um, take chances on things maybe exactly and i mean you do learn some kind of problem solving in philosophy so and i think you can apply that anywhere yes. to be honest like so I a think logical the strand, reasoning or deduction exactly or like you need it like 
like if you have some issue in some company and you know how to look at the big picture your grant like you know yes. anyway um but yeah philosophy so yeah i just wanted to like read and analyze and yeah yes yeah. so what is there any philosophers that kind of stuck out to you as well a... yeah in, in the beginning i was really um fascinated by Sartre and Nietzsche you Nietzsche, know yes. yeah like the existentialist yeah what does so just can you describe existentialism if you can um existentialism is basically just trying to on analyze um what exists like you know like existence existentialism so it's called like in philosophy it's called ontology from like yes. ontos to be then logo anyway so um um for example Sartre he was like in comparison to the philosophers before like look more almost what you call it like practical in the way that he was looking at the things that are actually there you know like you have for example like Immanuel Kant and he's like um an idealist mm. you know like or you have like play to like working with ideas yes um but like he was like all right you know like these things we see in the world Let's mm. assume they are there. Yes, know? yes. Let's first assume they <laughs> so, are real. And I was like, I can go with that. Yes. And um, then it's a, it's about. I mean, um, for like Sartre's existentialism is like more about the individual, like about the human being and like our life and how we conceptualize or how we go about our lives, right? Mm. And like he basically said that the human being is like compared to other things or objects in the world it's the subject right Mm. and the subject doesn't really exist because we change all the time like we change constantly yes and we we even plan to change like you know like we make up our future so it was all about um like a developing like a blueprint for your future and trying to mm. be that like i actually don't know what like the title of like his book is translated into english but it's basically like the being and the nothing i, I don't know what it's oh. called in english and like we are the nothing basically because we are like fluctuating in a way like not not in a super abstract way but like just like you know like you're I'm, aging you know like yes you're you're changing but and my then, ideas to, like today could i could have fundamental ideas tomorrow just from an, some sort of insight i could yeah. be different or i could decide that oh you know what i don't want to do this thing anymore i'm gonna do this yeah. so we're always in we're always in flux yeah let's say and, and we're all, yeah. yes and i mean really everything is changing i mean things are falling apart as well yeah so actually <laughs> this is so interesting that differently <laughs> That's such a beautiful way of describing it because yeah. we're moving towards um, as entropy, like like yeah, exactly. things are falling apart. That's such yeah. a that's such you know? a sad and beautiful way to say it, it because is. you've actually this is such a weird thing now. You've just triggered this in my head. As I'm watching the world unfold and as time is ticking on, it's like there, there's a cataclysm. Like I'm, it's it's dripping down until our own final end in a weird it kind is. of way. And, I love and the end of the universe, perhaps. Yeah. And I love watching um, the time lapse of the universe on YouTube. I watch it like every couple of months. It's one of my favorite oh my videos God. because it is it, like it really gives you perspective. There's a beautiful people should watch that. You know, time lapse of the universe. Yes, there's a really good uh, Wikipedia uh, page called uh, "The History of the Universe as It mm. Will Unfold" uh, in terms of from the scientific perspective. So let's say in eight hundred thousand years. The sun will be will, will start to swell or whatever, and mm. uh, the photosynthesis that takes place currently won't be able to take place in that world. So that's so. Let's say that I think the sun has about four billion years left in it, mm-hmm. but in about like four hundred to eight hundred thousand years, like things are gonna have to change drastically. And we're, as the sun expands, um, its mass will decrease, so its pull of gravity will will, will the orbits of the planets move out. So there's all these cool things that they can kind of uh, say that can potentially happen. And then there's these strange phenomenon. Like if you give enough time, I don't know if you've ever heard this thing called the Bayesian brain, right? So this is an idea. Um, so apparently, because in, in now this is, maybe I need to, like this was current science a while ago, so who knows, but there was a, in empty space, like in a pure vacuum, mm. uh, like I think some sort of molecular structures can emerge like uh, spontaneously out of the vacuum. So there's So there's this idea that Uh, a Bayesian brain it's like a philosophical thing where if all the atoms of you just emerge in their particular alignment just randomly Mm. (laughs) 
right and like whatever it was that was you like would it be you for yeah. that kind of uh, <laughs> that kind of second but I won't get too into the physics because we're back yeah. into the philosophy so with uh, so with Sa- Santa you were saying and then you were saying with yeah. Nietzsche um because yeah. I, I um I've, done, I've just watched loads of YouTube videos on uh, yeah. Nietzsche I love Nietzsche's uh I just love trying to understand like the will to the will to power, let's say, or the will. I think Schopenhauer, Schausen, I don't even know. Schopenhauer. Schopenhauer. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. Schopenhauer. This yeah. why I don't I'm not going fella, there. All German fellows. Yes, yeah. but they, the will, because yeah. I like this idea the of the will. will. The will to be, the will for everything to yeah. be, like the will as in a fund, it's like a fundamental force or driver of the world, let's say. Yeah. Uh, or it's a good way to describe things that are moving towards a particular direction, let's say. Or then um then Nietzsche took that idea and then kind of took it to another level. But it's it it the and then like the Uber I, I love those philosophy because it can just help you look at the world in a kind of thus it gives you tools for looking at the world yeah, and exactly. trying to have lack because I think let's say with this AI stuff, right? I know well, I'm going off yeah. right, but uh, uh one thing I'll say is that with prompt when you're writing prompts to get the AI to do your thing. I was trying. I, now that they have this term called prompt engineering to describe that process, so, okay. so they have like <clears throat> if you're doing that, you're trying to engineer a prompt to elicit a certain response. But having mm-hmm. the language to, t- to like, oh, prompt engineer. Now I know how to describe that thing, and so now I can think about it more. So the more, yeah, all the, right. The more tools you have yeah. in your sort of yeah. linguistic tool set. You can actually think deeper and in different ways about the thing. Yeah. In a weird way, like yeah. I was actually going to say, maybe. That, yeah, that's so interesting how we, in a way, rely on terms. Like I think, I think you call it like terms or terminology yes. in a way, like definitions is maybe a, a better word. And then, like, as you say, there there are tools. Like at once, somebody just like hands you these definitions. Your whole scope opens yes. to that, you know. And like it's it's the same with them. Um, um, I mean, I think that uh, in different languages, um, you know, they reflect the culture as well and the mentality, the mindset and everything. Mm. And like some languages wouldn't have certain words. Yes. You know, and um, others so would. And then, you know, you adapt maybe some words from a different language into yours, you know. Um, yeah, for example, like the word, there was no word for freedom in Mandarin, you know. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. It's, but like it's just like a way of thinking like a cultural thing like in itself first of all it's like free of norms like there's like no evaluation with that yes. but like like the thought of um yeah i mean i don't know it's interesting isn't it yes. yeah certain thing, certain characteristics of our own your language that you might take for granted um like is there any differences that you can see or point to um with german and english like one thing that i've heard uh, spoken about is just that there's there's this really good word called like a I'm gonna mess this up, but a a a hit a kadanka or something, or a, a hurt. What's that? It, it could be like uh, Alan Watts says it. It's like a, ah, oh, it's like some sort of conundrum, or it's like anyway. I actually I can't really remember, right? But I'm caught. I'm caught out there, right? You. <laughs> well, I was I was waffling about philosophy. I'm terrified. I bet you I pronounce it. Yeah, you're just like oh no. I'm terrified. Like, now you put yourself you forward know. as a doctor of philosophy. No. no, no. <laughs> I, See, I'm that's why I could get away with it. No, you, we can... I, I'm probably going to read back like, oh, that wasn't Star Trek. Yeah, <laughs> like, like, no, it was. But like, oh, that was know. Star Trek, not <laughs> Santa. <laughs> I do this all the time. I, I, I'm so convinced. And I listen back and I'm like, oh, I need, I need, no, I need a I fact just, checker, you actually. You put me on the spot there. Yeah, you know, no, like, but we're screwed. Summarized, you know. Yeah, summarized. <laughs> What what is the core? What does philosophy like, mean? I haven't read this shit. In 10 yeah, this years. isn't a dissertation <laughs> or anything. Uh, you know. But um, so we yeah. so let's go back, right? Because uh, so what I'm trying to say is what I should have just said without trying to make up words or whatever was that uh, with German there's certain words that encapsulate like multiple words. Let's say in the English language that you can um, that they, it's like oh we have one word for let's say what it might take a few words or maybe there's no real way to describe mm. it in English. That's one thing I've heard. Yeah, um, I, th- I don't know. I think every language has that, but like they have just different connotations, and maybe sometimes some. I mean, I I do love German just because I th- like just even comparing the language when I write or things like that. Like I think, in some ways, like writing essays, like academic essays, 
I think it's for me I find it easier in German oh, well easier anyway you know yeah. but um from the mean like you can have shorter sentences and that's true but it's also a grammatical thing it's like how you build the sentence so like I actually watched a TED talk on this at some point so this isn't like you know like right not- no, first right disclaimer <laughs> we're not experts right google your shit right google your shit. just listen to us and pretend that we're, we know what we're talking about exactly so um they were talking about languages and comparing, I think maybe it was even English and German, and they were having bilingual people describe, um, I think, photographs. And like one was showing a person on a, on a bicycle, um, and the other picture was showing somebody with like shopping bags, like halfway between a building and a car, right? Mm. So the one with the shopping bags, um, like the when the same person would describe it in English, they would say, like, oh, they're carrying the bags, like a shopping bag, yes. whatever. In German, they would say, they're taking the bags to the car. Oh. So it's, like, more common in German to have a direction of where you're going. The like, purpose behind exactly, it. Exactly. Like, it's, it's like, you know, like the vector of your actions. It's like, you know, you're going somewhere. There's like a plan behind yes. it, you know. It's like, um, it's quite pragmatic in yes, a way. Pro- yes, yes, yes. That's then, so funny. It is. But it's so, like, intrinsic to the language, like yes. to the mentality, you know, because this is then all, and then that forms your thinking. It's like the terms you're being given they will form the way you think yes. about and like in the German person just because of the language they might be thinking a certain way about the world um, and differently compared to maybe an English speaker just because they learn German first which wow. is so interesting and then like in English it's more common to use the you know like the present progressive of like like what is it called that you know like when you're carrying out an action I you don't know, have a clue. it's like it's when I know, you put. I know verbs. I know <laughs> nouns. <laughs> right. So this is like when you're carrying or walking or yes. whatever. Like this is like in the midst of the action, and like it's quite common in English, not so common in German. Mm. So you're like, you you just like more verbs. Like the verb is more in the focus, and like in in German you have, would have more nouns. Mm. So um, like with the with the. Um, bicycle picture like in English the person would be cycling um, and in, in German I actually can't remember but they might be going somewhere might on their bike somewhere. Yes. You know. somewhere important yeah but it's not <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but, uh, but it's interesting but this it? is interesting what what is it then because there's this kind of um, I used to work with a guy Jonas uh, he used to work for Google at a company and um, there's this kind of um let's say it's a stereotype that like German people, they're very, let's say, engineering minded, like standardization, like very just like um, organized when it comes to, let's say if we want to- like barely hanging on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but let's just say, right, let's say this is my interpretation yeah. of what like my stereotypical German is. It's just, yeah, yeah. oh, if I needed to build a car or something, <clears throat> and maybe it's the car stuff, like the guy oh, that gets yeah. tied in. Um, like German engineering is a kind of you hear you'd hear that term as a <laughs> as a like you'd see that as a good thing, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like Irish engineer cars, I'd be like, <laughs> I don't know, bunch of lads just messing around, <laughs> late for work, and yeah, uh, yeah. or Japanese. I, I, have you ever seen this kind of film? Although it wasn't Japan actually, um, American Factory, right? Mm-hmm. It's it's absolutely brilliant. So show it's like a, this it's this um, Chinese. Uh, they make windshield glass, right? But they mm. come to America to set up a, a plant, let's say, and it shows the kind of American workers and they're trying to instill the Chinese culture over there of... Uh, oh. they go, they, so every day before work, they do roll call and then they go, they all have this kind of shared... Uh, they do what? They do like a roll call. So they're like, one over one. No, J- Jamie, oh, Annie, right. blah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then they all okay. go, all right, have a good day. Yeah. And they all do a little thing. Yeah. But in, they're trying to get that over in America. Americans are just like this stupid stuff, right? Mm. But when I go over to China, you see them because they 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 operate like a, a unit, let's say, and they they mm-hmm. have building rituals, let's say. Yeah. Um, they build that that instills an ethos or or like like a work ethic. Yeah, maybe. work ethic, let's say, or like the spirit, mm. the spirit of their their it's more collective spirit and like. I won't let you down because I'm going to work because we have to all work together. So if you instill that in a way, but it was just interesting to see the different cultures, how they approached, uh, 
how the approach work, whatever. Um, but just back to the sort of German stuff then, with your way of sort of that pragmatic outlook of describing uh, images or whatever, that's kind of embedded. So mm. what, do you think that that has any play into the, to the whole my German engineering stereotype? Yeah, for sure. Mm. Yeah, I say that goes hand in hand in a way, like a more pragmatic um, way of thinking about things. Um, I think it also, like, you know, there's also the stereotype of Germans being very frank and direct. Yes. And, like, it's just more efficient. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, more I was, efficiency! I, I, had, I had one conversation, what was it? Um, uh, right, uh, like, with an English woman. And um, she kept saying to me, um, like like should we perhaps discuss that you know like in that part of the the room or like like very indirect and the, i just like barely reacted i think in my head i was like yeah should we i don't know but like, <laughs> but like you know like as a like and then at some point i was like oh like in german she would have said let's go outside yes you know let's and i just in, in that moment i just didn't cop at all yes. like what she was but she was being like so polite but like indirect and like the indirectness is so interesting and like, oh, you, like wouldn't, oh, would you, you wouldn't mind moving that over there yeah but no but this is at, at least you're like asking me to move it yeah, like, yeah even if that's very polite but like um she would have been like would you prefer moving that over there and then i'm like thinking about my preferences Pref i don't know oh, my preferences yes oh but, like do but you it was about her preference all along <laughs> you know like she would have wanted me to move something you know yes so, so and then uh, it just took me ages to understand like now i think i know and i would have under you know yes would you got a little quicker, bit more you know but like in in germany would just be like move the smog like yeah whatever. straight to the point yeah or straight to the heart of whatever yeah, it is but, like, no not, dilly not, dallying not, around not being rude but but just like communicating where do you think clearly. that comes from from our no people idea. from your own thing i think no idea just off the top of my head, spitballing here as I do on the Basbury Boombox, it feels <laughs> that we are kind of, um, the, the, the perception of like rudeness, politeness, fairness or whatever, not being seen as, you know, don't tell me what to do or like dancing around, like not being direct, like being direct for some reason, it, it's way more efficient. It makes, it makes way more sense, but there is a tendency to, 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 to like, like kind of, not go at the thing but uh like dance around it in a way mm. and just be like oh like it's a, just to be uh just to be kind of i don't know it's like maybe it's perceived as nice or not as overbearing or not being a prick or something yeah it's like we're fr maybe that's it i don't know but anyway I that's no idea that is interesting um i think because just the different you've seen the two cultures i suppose like how long were you in germany for actually um my whole life Okay. Yeah, more or less. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so then you did. So you did your philosophy uh, degree in Berlin. In yeah. Berlin. Yeah. And then you. So how long after that did you move to Ireland? I I moved after my my bachelor's like straight after. It took me ages though to finish due to different reasons. So I like swapped my minors a couple of times until I finally stuck with literature, which I should have taken on from the beginning. Yes. Like I don't know. It's interesting like how little you can know and understand yourself, like especially with like little guidance. Um and then yeah, I saw, you know, that there was a program, like a creative writing program in um Dublin and I had already been to Dublin and I had fallen in love with the city. Like that that was maybe I I don't even know. Now I have to calculate. I'm really bad at calculating <laughs> ironically. <Yeah. laughs> it's why the physics didn't work out. <laughs> yeah. But this is why they have calculators. I'm not good at arithmetic, but with programming and stuff it's more abstract ideas. Yeah, like the stuff. for example like the logic in philosophy I was perfectly all right with that one yeah but they use words and like other signs but once there's there's a number there's some something yeah. happening in my brain me, like, i don't know add 43 to like oh no 59. Do like that. they hurt i hate that i was playing dart the other day <gasps> yes that's that's the, you know? that's and i was like i was like 24 and then like the guy said 27 and i like almost believed him yeah anyway it's like <laughs> well, i'm not calculating he's right but don't we all have to calculate anyway yeah but um, what, what was I saying actually? Uh, sometime after your bachelor's, you can. Oh yeah, no, you're, like, oh, yeah you're here, I think it was like two thousand nine. You're like, yeah, well, look yeah, at yeah, these yeah. people being so indirect or whatever. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I love this. I didn't talk to anyone. No, yes, no, but it was. I don't know. It was just. I think I, I was um, 
it was like my first experience of like traveling out of the country with oh, no, a I just found a quadruple. Yeah. I just feel my head. I'm just like, uh, well, I just hit, rec- I just making sure I hit record. Like, oh, but Jesus. that was just her. No, 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 no. I've been recording <laughs> the audio anyway, but I, I've, oh, just, okay. I've just been. Um, we could have made up the visuals. No, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like just for that little bit until I hit it. But it just anyway. Then my psychopathic, uh, my my psychotic Rams is looking at you like, oh, did I did I record it? Is it recording? Yeah, blah blah blah. Oh my god, you have to check. You have to check. You have to check. You have to check. Right. before it's too late but anyway so you came over you were yeah. you didn't speak to anybody but you were like damn i like this place yeah it was really i don't know it it seemed obviously it was very rainy um and it was i don't know i walked into like a bookshop with my friend and i picked up a copy of the aid it's like a very like affected story like it's like very um, I don't know if I used the right word. What was it? What story? It's just like a snobby story. Like I, I don't like telling. Like no, oh, I picked up the collection of this like Irish oh, poet. Yeah, yeah. You know? It was just gra- Like it was a poet. Yeah. You might have heard of but him. But I. But honestly, um, it was raining, and we like it was a um bookshop, and like this is gonna be a little plug like for the bookshop. Books upstairs, right? Books upstairs. <laughs> shout out. Use Basil and, Brain or, yeah. or Basil Brain slash Peter as your yeah, uh, yeah, as your yeah. code. <laughs> exactly. Um. And it was, I think, the first bookshop I walked in there, and it was lovely, and it was very, um, I don't know, it looked like very improvised in a way, mm. like, um, and then when I came back in like twenty nineteen, I I didn't know what the bookshop was called, and it had moved places and everything. I didn't know that, and I walked into a bookshop which was called Books Upstairs, mm. and um, loved it. They had a co- cafe upstairs and everything, and then I talked to the friend. And um, he sent me a picture of the bookshop we were in, and it had like a just like an A4 printout, you know, saying like book up books upstairs behind me. Yes. And I was like, this is mad. Anyway, so yeah, it's right. Um, he had a poem called like to to a friend whose work has come to nothing, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like I don't know any of us poetry, but like this, yeah, yeah. And what was it about that poem? Just the title. <laughs> um, I used to know it off heart. I don't know it anymore. But I think the first but line. How did it make you feel? What was the? Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. I think the first line is now all the truth is out or something like that. Mm. I, you know, I yes. love it. I already love it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah. well, well. Yes. You yeah. thought all this stuff was gonna <laughs> work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> something like yeah but yeah so then that after that then um i have no idea what we're talking about so what? we were we're just in we're just went into books upstairs we pulled out the book <laughs> we read we looked at the poem we said oh my god this is me how whatever you felt at that moment and then we were now we're putting the book down and then we're... after that i just fell in love with like english language literature oh you know and i was like you know quite young at that time and then i just kind of got into that and then at some point, I started writing in English as well, and then I saw, you know, the program here, and um, yeah. Interesting. So then I moved here. So you moved here to do a creative writing program yeah. over here. How long mm-hmm. did that go on for? Uh, just one year. Oh, okay. Yeah. And yeah. then, so that was, your plan was just to do this creative, or was it to, you were thinking about coming mm-hmm. to stay for a while now? Or? I had no idea. I originally had only planned to stay for the year, um and honestly like one of the reasons why i wanted to you know like take part in a degree like that was to have stricter deadlines Mm. i'm awful without deadlines oh yes like even though i love writing like finishing something if i don't have it it's just not gonna happen like you know and this is part of the reason why i like you know like verge from fiction into poetry as well because i can actually finish a poem yes (laughs) (laughs) you know like i love fiction as well and um, oh yeah you know having something that you can actually finish is is such a powerful thing yeah Yeah. I, i do need that yeah and with deadlines as well because uh, you might think deadlines are like antithesis to creative work but really if you don't se- if you don't set some sort of let's say you have the, the basic crux of what it is that you wanted to achieve with this piece of work but it just needs to be finished let's say but you're dilly dallying like it, you could you could spend your whole life dilly dallying you could keep changing a word a day for the rest mm. of your life if you really wanted to but yeah. when is it done when is this mm. snapshot of yeah, very your work done and like mm-hmm. that's a that's a you can say it's never done or you can just say yeah. i'm gonna have it done by tuesday <laughs> you know what yeah. i mean yeah 
<laughs> yeah, pretty much. Like that's that's actually an interesting thought. So like, I have two thoughts about this. Like, yes. The one thought was like on the topic of um, that I think creative work can be way more pragmatic and organized than people think. Like because I don't think it's like antithetical or whatever. Uh, that yeah, word yeah, is. yeah. Exactly. Uh, I don't even know the word. Um, it's not even a real word. No, it is a real word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the antithesis. I just, yeah, I just can't pronounce it. In yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but um, I think it feeds into it. Like you need to have some kind of structure to even work creatively. Like I think people have this, or like I mean, there's like a million opinions on this and I don't claim to have the right one. Yeah, just, a ger- <laughs> just a very German opinion on it. But um, like, I think people have this concept sometimes of creativity being like this, you know, this vague yeah. associative you know, it has to improvise me. exactly, exactly. But I don't, I don't think so. I think you can ha- even have a plan, like how you're gonna write the next poem, and then just do it like that. Yes. Like because people develop methods all the time, and it's the same with writing a story. I mean, stories have structures. Of course, you can also write a story without a structure. But there's even a method how to go about writing a story without a structure. Yes. And I, yeah. So it's it's kind of. And with poetry, it's it's the same, which doesn't mean that, you know, now you know when it's finished, but at least, like, in the creative work, the work itself can be way more structured yes. in that sense. There can be tangible action yeah. that you can take. And I even think it's, like, as a as a writer or my, even musician, artist, songwriter, whatever, like, they know what they're doing, you know? Mm. And, like, they, they might even get better at doing it the more they understand about how they go about the thing. Yes. And then like, like, oh, I'm inspired by this. So I work better like that. And like, I need like the first line, you know, to get going or I need the melody to get going. Yes. Or um, whatever the case like may be. Yeah. Let's say if you if you create a few pieces of work, then you have something to look back at and say, OK, what were sort of some commonalities with how I ended up finishing this work, let's say? Or what was the what were what were some of the processes or what what are parts that I enjoyed about the process mm. or whatever and these could work like little building blocks like maybe yeah. it was when I had t- a block of time that mm. I just had to write and I, and then I think the most important thing and I think um uh, I'm not a literary guy right like I'm not I'm not gonna prefix everything with just I'm not this whatever right? I'm just <laughs> some lad right but Hemingway I think he uh, he was a guy who uh, he always left himself something like so he'd never finish a chapter right he it could be anyway. You, can you finish uh, this while you're here? Like, uh, it could, right, so basically the, the, pre- the idea, right, is, yeah. is that instead of finishing the chapter, he'd leave himself a little yeah, bit to do yeah, the yeah, next yeah. day. I can't think of it. I, much, yeah. I actually, get, I resonate this with, so when I finish yeah. something, um, it's the starting of the new thing uh, mm. that is the hardest bit. It's the onboarding. Yeah. So for me, yeah. I've noticed, like with music, um, it I can just it comes it comes down to melody for me. That's the most fundamental, and everything kind of all. And then the chords are the next thing that I figured out. And then once I have so the and it's a chorus melody for me. So mm. and then all the verse melodies come out of that. So once I but the chord the chords like I I'm not like I'm not I just want to keep things simple for now on right. Mm-hmm. So in my head and they've always been simple, but like they don't ha- I don't have to have loads of chord changes right. So mm-hmm. I'm just like give me four chords that go with this melody. Then I'll 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 map out all the melodies of the song before I even get started right. Because then when I go to write the sound that so if I if I des- if I describe a melody to you, like I have to put sound on it, like so I'm on rolling and I'm falling oh, deeper. That's exactly Maybe that's the what it is. Of how but I do. but yes, but I I kind of I kind of um, yeah. I allow uh, the random like I like this idea of random stuff and then it's just feeling good. Yeah, I'm yeah, a sound yeah. person, as in this because the sound has to sound good for me and then that but that could take away from um the the, the actual right like but it depends what music uh, for me it has to taste nice in my mouth from mm. from what i've noticed yeah. uh, for songs whatever but uh but anyway, that's one way i go about it but yeah have you noticed any sort of methodologies or commonalities or how you approach the work yeah for sure just like i i do think like these things are like really important like the way um like it sounds you know like the consonants you use or the vowels or whatever yes. like in the melody as well like i like i'm not a songwriter but there was one piece um like juani and me were working on like no, my love as well like i'm not sure you heard that one but it, it's almost a song mm. you know 
um and um now I'm currently working on something. No idea if it's gonna be finished, you know, so no pressure. Yes. But um it's gonna be similar. It's gonna be kind of like a song, but like I need a chorus. Like we almost have everything else. And, yes. like, and then I hear you talk about like I have my chorus first. I'm like, what? <laughs> like I need a chorus, you know. Well, so, so interesting. Now only... I'm trying to come up with a melody. I have no idea how to do that. The you know? This the all the all there's But I have like the bass line in my head and like things like that. Anyway. The chorus is there then. It exists for you a hundred percent. It's already there. It, once you have certain parts. So when you're subjecting that art or that piece of work to your taste, the thing that comes out of it, like, is is it's just going to be there. It's waiting for you to kind of yeah. just to just pull it out in a weird way. Yeah, so you just kind of have to say. So for me, the reason I go for courses first is that, like you're saying, so you're maybe maybe when you said you're not going to you might not finish it. You're alluding to maybe that if like, let's say because I finish songs that no one will ever hear because when I come back I finished them I thought they were good mm -hmm. but then I'm like ah oh, actually it didn't that's not really that great mm -hmm. uh, so anyway but it was good <laughs> it was good practice let's say I got something yeah. out of it um, and so yeah, then yeah. with choruses uh, if I if I start with the chorus there's more chance of me having something that I enjoy I think more because if I have like mm -hmm. 10 choruses like kind of because if, if I have to write verses and bridges and all this for a song I'm yeah. committing so much time so if I don't like mm -hmm. the chorus then what's the point and if I write a verse, I mightn't like the chorus. Yeah. And the chorus for me is the... Well, for me, the words were first, right? Yes. So, like... But that's what I mean. Verse, like, it makes sense that you go... Because verses are the most wordy, let's yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the most, sense. And, like, they're, they differ. So, yeah. you're, you're not constrained. Verses aren't as constrained by choruses, let's say. Um, not that a song has... To, anyway, I don't want to get too into it. But it makes sense that you would probably mm. gravitate towards uh, to, just the written, the writing of the, the verses, let's say, first. Um, so then what what then is the plan for, for that one then you're just saying oh if we had a chorus what's the do you have any melody what does the verse well, go like well the one was? like the the one where I actually had the chor the chorus I don't know first was like the my love is a well thing and I actually had written the um the thing like I had like kind of a poem like all right my writing process is so messy yes. it's so messy and so organized at the same time yes. i don't even know where to start because like i just have like this file of it's, is like, it it's, physical no okay i mean kind of it's on my phone yes <laughs> that's both right? is it in the cloud yeah okay of course. yeah 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 just i'm so happy <laughs> to say that <laughs> of course um and what do you use I, like apple I, notes or, um, Evernote or it's just like google, google docs, docs. Oh, okay just like google docs um and I just try to put everything there. And then once I notice, okay, this section is going to be a poem, I copy paste it into, you know, a new file and actually name it after what's going to be or whatever. Yeah. And then, but um, I just have like all of these notes. And then I had already like a few lines written and I could already see something emerge or, or I knew I wanted to work with these lines. And then, um, um, you know, like Dylan Savage has this one song he, he, those with John Doe like where he sings in the chorus mm. and there was like one time where John Doe wasn't there and like he was like oh can you fill the gap right oh yeah so I, I wrote something that fit in there and I ended up using that for my for my own poem because mm. it emerged from that um so with this one I actually had it and like you were asking me about the melody like people might might know it I'm not going to assume people know it anyway it was like pressure on my darkness and no light to release you say life's no competition but i never succeed if it's a game it never lets me play my life is like a well don't fall don't dwell the pressure of the past still weighs me down today it drags me underneath to the bottom of the sea pressure on my darkness and no light to release i dig for my dreams in the mode of the sea. Okay. And that's like the chorus for so, um, my love is so for me, well. could you try and hum that without the words? Or could you say, if you can, mm -hmm. can you make that, can you make that with without just, the words? Without like the da, words. Da, da. Whatever you need, whatever comes to you. Yes. I'm so good. <laughs> See, it's all, no, but it's interesting because. But like all my lines have a pitch. You know, like that's what I'm saying. Like but I have the the intonation I do I do it every time for the same poem. Yes. And I like I'm conscious of it. So you feel like that it's it intentional. Is, that you could play your poems on a piano potentially. 
if I could play piano. Yeah, but, but no, but not you. But if the yeah. note, there's notes. There's yeah, like, there is notes. Like, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. But it's it's actually, not as strict as if it was a song. But there's notes now in what we're speaking. Like I'm like yeah, blah, 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 and like so. Yeah. But but that's what I'm saying. It's fundamental, actually. Like we can't avoid saying things at pitches, right? But yeah, it's interesting true. that you have them in your mind because when you're speaking. It kind of hides melody in a weird way. That's why when I was listening to your, the first part of that, uh, that um, chorus you did, it was hard for me to sort of hear the melody in a way. So I was like, where is the melody? So that's why I wanted you to kind of say yeah. say the melody because it's more, because it is more, it's a more spoken. And I think when things are sung, yeah. perhaps there's more of a tendency to get, to hear, yeah. see the melody in a kind of weird way. Yeah, well, it's very monotonous, so... Yeah. yeah, like like it does, it does, it, it does like you know. But it's but lots of lots of you'd be so surprised. Lots of melodies use, yeah. would use single notes. Mm. Like there's there's a there's really great like if you think about the jaws, it's literally da, 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 da. oh yeah, 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 they're like literally a space. They're like right beside each other on the piano. Or <laughs> um, there's some great uh, oh, there's like. Anyway, I can't think of it now. Like, yeah. but but like I'm like one of my inspirations, or like you know, Leonard Cohen, mm, you know. Yes. Like there's this song that was also used for True Detective as a soundtrack, ah. um, which is called Nevermind, and um I can't I don't know the lyrics of, but um. I don't know. Like there's truth that lives and truth mm -hmm. that dies. I was not caught. I crossed the line, and it's like it's mm. quite monotonous, but also not. Yes. Like he's kind of talking, but he's also singing. Mm. But um, I I love that style. Okay. Yeah. It's yeah. interesting the line between um, between singing and and speaking, like cause man, like music, and it, it's so such a strange thing. So I'm listening to this book called um, Your Brain on Music, right, and it kind of. So, do you know why language, let's say, has particular ways of looking at the world or there's mm. particular, um, like, grammar or whatever, right? So, the language, the language, like, let's say, music, right? So, when we're tuning a piano or an instrument to, art, the, like, the Western scale, let's say, we're deciding, okay, um, the, a, the, the A note is going to be, let's just say, it's at 400 hertz, right? Like, mm -hmm. what, or whatever the number is. And then, mm -hmm. and then the numbers that um, come after that, are going to be tuned like relative to that. Like oh it's, yeah. It's some mathematical yeah, yeah, function. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the fact that we pick four hundred is kind of arbitrary. Yeah. Like so we can pick it, as long as it, as long yeah. as the ratios and the mathematics works out. But we've decided in whatever reason that oh it falls on this, and we've decided like to ignore microtones like tones in between like let's say in between the da 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 da. We can't. It's hard for us to even comprehend. But the notes that are in between, yeah, like just like, like <laughs> yeah, yeah, because if you're like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so there's like, but th there's so much in, I and mean, then the music that we, the reason we enjoy, like, let's say, think certain music is sad, like mm -hmm. minor notes mm -hmm. or minor chords versus major chords. There, there are some studies that suggest that it is not just um, it's not frequency, just, so as well. Yeah, it? it's frequencies, but. The, the feeling that we feel of sadness when we hear a minor chord, like it's everyone can kind of. But, but why that, is it so universal though? But it's not is it, that is it universal. Not? That's the thing. It it's not. Right? It's, there are, no, but it is. There are. There is some studies apparently, but a lot of it is culturally learned. A lot of it is actually. So you might think song is that sad, but in, in Chinese culture or whatever, there's other cultures, there's other scales that it might be perceived oh, really? as sad. Yes. I never and this, thought about that. This is why it's so... Because the culture... Oh, um, like certain and, and certain resolutions, like when a, when a, the, at the end, let's say the last chord or the last note... Oh, and you know, it has to finish on F, like... Yeah, like or, it has, or yeah, something. Yeah, it has yeah, to... Yeah, yeah. If, or else it feels wrong to us. It feels yeah. dissonant to us, right? Mm. And our feelings of dissonance and stuff are learned through... That's, through that's the, subjective? Yes. That's insane. It's I insane. didn't know that. We are, as children, right? We're all yeah, have the ability yeah, yeah, yeah. to learn the musical language yeah. of the times, of the culture. So let's say you might think certain music is timeless, whatever. Yeah. But in a thousand years or whatever, someone might have decided that. Uh, and this is why, as we get older, this is why it makes sense. Like people say, oh, music is getting worse or it's, it's not as good as it was back in the day. Mm. It's because we're all pulling from a different musical palette in a weird kind of way. Yeah. So it's kind of. Um, but anyway, so the musical rabbit hole like goes also, so yeah, deep. Yeah, but it's sure. not as. Um, 
like the voice is fundamental melody is fundamental sound is fundamental yeah. in a way but yeah. the sort of the interpretation and language up on top of that it's just as kind of um as malleable as other languages let's say yeah and it's just kind of um oh please if you <laughs> don't just write it down <laughs> Interrupt me! Um, How can you read? That Ryan doesn't even... Oh man, I know. I don't know. It's just like little... I know. It's just like a straight line. Yeah. Um, well, two thoughts. Um, like who, who was the... What's the name of the singer again who sings like Don't Worry, Be Happy? What's his name? Um, Pat McFarren. Um, yeah, yeah. M- M- is that Patrick McFarren? Could be. No. Bobby... Bobby McFarren. That Bobby is. McFarren. Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, great teamwork. Yeah. Um, there was um I watched like um one of his concerts um on YouTube and then where he gets the crowd to sing yes. and then they sing like he only gives them like the first few like and I don't know anything about the music yes. theory but he he plays like the first I don't know two or three notes and then it could like either go like um blue scale or the other one yes, I don't know yes, yes. what's the other one I don't know so, but and then they sing the notes like something like ba 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 whatever yeah, I don't yeah. know and then he asks him to to sing the next by themselves or like he doesn't say anything and they all go blues mm, yes collectively but collectively they understand so but uh, they could have also not gone blues exactly they they because they understand the language of the music at the top like they 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 know instinctively where to, if i if i nearly go if i'm like oh do you want to go and i'm pointing like outside you might finish you'll be like oh outside or do you ever finish someone's sentence for them in a weird way like yeah. they're struggling to find a word sometimes you'll fill in the gap yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. It probably but what you're describing there when he he's talking about the pentatonic scale so i'll just get oh, into okay. a little bit right oh, so yeah, yeah, please do. in our western thing right there's like 12 notes in the whole of music right and then it, but every it repeats every octave so if mm-hmm. i have a piece of string that's a meter long mm-hmm. and then i shorten it to 50 percent of that that's going to p- sound like it doubles so the c okay c like do yeah. that song right re- so the rainbow yeah. that jumps um, where that's an octave oh, okay, right? but they're yeah. the same note and they feel like the same note mm. but so the 12 notes repeat a couple of times right so in them 12 notes the major scale is one way to take seven of them notes all imagine mm-hmm. you just play all the white notes because if you don't play the black keys on a piano that's the c major scale yeah. right and then the pentatonic scale mm-hmm. is if you take just five of them notes mm-hmm. So uh, then you, that's just the pentatonic scale. Pent up or five. Yes, something. and a lot of uh, like Jimi Hendrix, a lot of uh, great solos are because you d- really oh pent up. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, with them five notes, and this is why um, we, if you understand a bit of music theory, it's very powerful because you might think no, like random notes or whatever. But there's actually if you if you learn the structures, let's say, mm. um, with chord sequences like in, and scales, and the pent- if you just play the pentatonic notes, yeah. In a in like just, it's very hard to mess up. <laughs> like if you're improv yeah. right, and you only select yeah. the pentatonic scale of A minor or something, as long as you're playing it, like if I hit a note like, mm-hmm. imagine there was music behind that rhythm. Rhythm is the most important to make it yeah, sound yeah, yeah, musical, yeah. right? You know, but if you just hit random notes in the pentatonic scale. You probably come out with something that's like not that bad. I'm gonna do that when I get home. Yes, um, <laughs> but I, what he does is brilliant, actually. Uh, that kind of um, that improv. Uh, Bobby does, Farrell. Bobby, are you sure? I think no. it's McFarrell. McFarrell? No, Mac, I don't think so. It's Max something. No. All right, this is gonna be your first, right? I'm gonna, so I'm gonna do my I'm, own Jamie, I'm right? Say Bob, so Bobby. Bobby Farrell. I'm ma- say. Bobby Farrell, you're saying? Something like that. Oh man. Bobby, uh, hold on. Let me say it. Don't. Ah, uh, McFarren. McFarren. M C F E O R I N. C. What do you mean C? <laughs> <laughs> Run that tape back, and you'll see who was closer. No, no, right? no. I wasn't. No, I, no. Didn't, I don't think either. I was going to say C. My memory is so bad. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like C, I'm right. Uh, so like, she's always, she's no. always right. You know, she's always right. But uh, anyway, we'll get to it. Anyway, so we're going full circle because you say, like, once you have the structure down of the musical theory, you know, then within this structure, being creative is so, you know, easy. Yes. And like, like you're, with the limitation, your creativity has kind of almost more freedom, right? Yes. So, like, this is how I feel sometimes with writing as well. So, like, going, no, going back to the writing process. Yes. <laughs> like, it's like I don't know. Like I have different ways of approaching a piece, and um, 
I don't know, it's something between, you know, just like what I enjoy doing, reading and um, what I think kind of not an ideology behind it, but maybe um, I don't want to say philosophy, but like kind of like a mindset behind it or something. It's just like that, like for me, the individual lines are really important, right? Yes. Um, and then because I don't know, like I don't want to waste my time. I don't want to waste your time. Like, I don't know. Like, it yes. just, and also I get distracted easily. So I kind of need to be drawn in by every line myself. Yes. Otherwise, I can't listen. You know, I find it very difficult. Mm. Um, and um, so I don't know, like sometimes, you know, I just like sit down, I write down a bunch of words, whatever, you know, like or, like stream of consciousness kind of. Um, and then I cut back until like only the bones are left and like everything that was kind of filler, the words you would use, you know, when you write um, um, conversationally or something like that, like you can cut so much and yes. then you can find stronger verbs maybe or you stick with the words that you chose. And then, um, you know, like, maybe i even identify while I, i'm editing what it, it is about yes. and then i can maybe streamline it toward that mm. um yes yeah. so so let's say if i locked you in a room now and i said uh, come up with a poem in the next five hours mm -hmm. so part of your process would potentially be just start writing just yeah start yeah, writing. yeah for sure because otherwise it's too hard yeah 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 <laughs> like, what am i about it's like I'm just simple start as well you know like yes. just start you just know? start you need, because it's like if you have something on the page there's something to work with if you have nothing what are you going to work with you yes. know like the blank page is the scariest thing ever yes, you yes. know and and editing is such for me it's such a joy compared to oh, writing like editing I love like, yay! editing I put edit for edit yes <laughs> and someone gave me loads of yeah, stuff I like, love I love I love editing I would love working and publishing like yes. I would I would love it it's like, I'm, I, I'm trying but like, yeah oh interesting so because uh, um, with, with programming let's say or we call it like refactoring so like okay. let's say we write code just to get like to get the, get the thing out the door and then we do a code review and mm. then we get to refactor. We get to be like, oh yeah, that was that wasn't a great. Oh, oh was it like much. the better version of something? Yeah, or so something, you're maybe yeah. you're repeating yourself a few times yeah, 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 in a yeah, yeah. in a it's kind like, of yeah. like. Oh, I don't want to get too into the abstract, but anyway, like coding is a real cool way of writing, man, um, because it, it it shows you system how you can systematize certain things and uh, why you should systemize them, and then you look at the world. It changes your whole way of thinking about everything. You look at things like in a sort of fundamentally different way. I think everyone should try and learn a little bit of programming and just understanding of like functions and because everything's like a function. Like if it's raining outside, bring an umbrella. Like if my back's getting sore, put a pillow behind mm. me or whatever. And it's like if statements and then mm -hmm. while it's still raining, keep holding up the umbrella. Otherwise put down the umbrella. Anyway, we'll get too into stuff, yeah. right? But um, just on that, so then that point then, because editing is such a, once you have it there, like, because you can just write. Anyone, you can just write. Like, yeah. you can just, you're like, I am writing. This is great, or it's not great. What am I even doing here? Jesus, is there any point to life? What's I would actually, the meaning? like, love to do that, to just, like, do a writing session, like, a live writing session like that, and, like, make a great poem after, like, 15 minutes and show people. Yes! Can we do that at some point? Like, that's brilliant. Like, not today, but, like, yes. you know. Yes, like, that'd be brilliant, uh, because uh, there's this guy, Paul Graham, he's a blogger, um, in the Silicon Valley like nerd sphere, let's say, but he showed his process of writing a blog, writing a blog or whatever, mm. and he shows him writing the first few sentences, right? And it's a time lapse, and just shows him getting rid of it, then going mm -hmm. again, and getting mm -hmm. rid of it, going mm -hmm. again, and it's like whatever. And yeah. if you see how many times you actually come back to it, yeah. like people yeah. think it comes out like gold dust, man. And it's just yeah. like no, it's the point is, is that let's say we're improvising or we're coming up with the concept, that's like getting it out there. But to take it to that next level, yeah. you you sit there and you think and you put time into what you have. Yeah. And then the editing is just, that's that process. Yeah, and I do believe in editing. Like there's also writers, like especially poets, who don't like really believe in editing. They're like, you know, like the first, Stone, the the first is draft said. is yes. like, and the first draft, like how it came out. So, yeah, it's like supposed to be like that or something. I, I, I don't believe in that. Yes. For me, it's like, at least have a look, you know, like, and if it's perfect, yes. great, you know, but like, you gotta have that critical look as if you didn't write that, you know, like it's just the words. Yes. And if there's a way to make it better. And then sometimes there are these strange pieces, they almost, you know, come out in a way and they will remain like that. Like yes. maybe there, there are a few pieces that don't need a lot of editing um i yeah i have like one or two like 
I have a shorter one I use as an example for that's like the thoughts don't stand or walk I, I don't know people yes. refer to it as the pigeon one <laughs> oh, which is interesting I hate pigeons <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> anyway, yeah, yeah. <laughs> look up the page. <laughs> no, it's uh, yeah. It's anyway. A, anyway, but yes, uh, um, and like this almost came out like that. But like the strongest line of it, I edited it in afterwards. Mm. The one line that sticks with people after after I perform it or read it or whatever that you know I edited in afterwards. So there's you know no such thing. And actually, I thought it came out like that, but I found um. An my my like note I sometimes in work because like I get these thoughts right <laughs> oh, I need something yeah and then like I'm just like I don't know, look out the window and I literally like saw a pigeon like drop so like the first thing is I watched the pigeons drop like pebbles from the edge of the roof down towards the concrete <sighs> yes. and I, I did see that and it did look like that it was like the pigeon and it didn't spread its wings it just like, just, like dropped. dropped and I was watching it you know on like the bleak Dublin day yes. <laughs> and um then it's Th- then that was born. The end. Yes. And I wrote down the note, and I kept thinking that I wrote it down the way it was in the end in the poem. And I looked at the note; everything misspelled, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No yeah. autocorrect you on the page. The yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, pigeons with a D, G, everything. Anyway, but um, stupid pigeon dropped. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was so different, and I was so surprised yes. because I couldn't even remember that anymore. Um, but yes, um, with with uh, I used to I used to be like that when I first started writing. That oh no, it's it's like I'm so precious about lyrics, or whatever. But I just found that like even with some songs, I've completely changed the course, or I've completely mm. changed because like I said I wrote the song and I thought actually there's this is, it feels strong like a strong song, but the chorus isn't strong or this verse mm-hmm. or I need to redo the bridge. It's not okay. working. So yeah. you have to the, the thing you have to realize um, it's about being self aware and listening to where yeah because when you've seen the pigeon right. Mm-hmm. Someone else might have seen the pigeon and not felt anything, but for some reason, like your energy of like Annie Peter taught that there was that I needed to capture the some en- there was energy associated with you well, yeah, just, catching it inspired that. Inspired me. Yes, to write but the only way I can describe. Yeah. So the most fundamental. So this I've been trying to think about this for a while. Uh, Rick Rubin's new book, and uh, I've mentioned this a few times, but I can't. I, I'm gonna repeat myself, right? Like this is the battle of Brady Boombox, <laughs> but because uh, he talks about like collecting seeds or whatever and. But you, right? So you are you have a different opinion for tea or a different opinion for colour, a different like you have a subjective taste for stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And that's kind of the fundamental part that makes your work like you like one sentence versus another sentence. Yeah. But there's an like when you see when you feel inspired, mm-hmm. you as your entity in this universe is feeling inspired. And yeah. your that imprint of you is getting pulled in a direction. And if you, you can either capture or answer that energy mm-hmm. or you can let it go. But I think the more we listen to that energy yeah, yeah. that pulls us, and it's the same when we're editing. If we know that this line isn't strong, but we don't yeah. want to change it just because it's going to be effort, we ha- we'll never be happy with it. Well, we ha- yeah. you, have to, you have to listen to your energy and what, what it's telling you. Uh, like if you don't like a particular line or if you don't feel... Like you know, before I think for me anyway, the more you do it, the more you build an intuition. But yeah, like but you can also reflect the intuition. Yeah, like, this is where I would come back to that. Once you're aware of what's not working in what way, you can approach it like more methodically as well. Yes. Like. In what way, like? Um. Well, when you say there's like an like an energy or something like, like there's definitely something like intuition and like I mean I don't know like half the time like the way like I come up with, like, with a certain sentence as well but like sometimes you can go back and be like oh it, it doesn't work because the rhythm is off oh yeah or it doesn't oh, work it's like something actual fundamental be- exactly because like x and y is just a weak word you yes. know there, there are like very strong words that like but even that's part of your taste in a it- weird way I know you might think it's real, but you think it's real. No, some part of it is definitely real. Like the pentatonic thing is real, yes, right? Yes, but you I mean, might, it's, sub- it's like maybe but, culturally subjective. But you but, might, you yeah. might know that, but you, you might decide that for your taste that it's not real, or it's not. It doesn't matter that I violate this principle. Oh so yeah, yeah, yeah. For your sure. taste. So what I mean is, you as Annie Peters, just like with your knowledge of rhythm. When you read that, I have no knowledge, your your, but yes. <laughs> your taste your taste says this is out of rhythm because I'm I there's a convention that I'm aware of let's say and I am choosing to apply that convention. 
So it com- you put someone else's mind ha- like even though it's real, it's your you're the final. You are the final say. In the fi- what- it depends. If I perform final say in a way, I can see if it works when I see how the audience reacts. Oh yes, that's the and other like, part. And this of is it. this in a weird way became part of the editing process as well. Like, and I heard other like spoken word performers talk about this as well. That like it's like a trial phase. It's like you you basically like try this piece like with the yes. audience and then see if it works and you will only know then even if you spoke it out loud in your room before or in front of a friend or something it's always different when you see like a bunch of maybe i don't know five ten twenty people and the way they yes. react to things and um if you can capture their attention all of these things and then yeah because that's a, like when it's like a stand-up comedian as well like that that mm. com- that conversation with the audience um is very important and even from some of my so my songs, actually, I, I remember one in particular uh, had a really long bridge. Um, it's like the third song on my album coming out, but it it, it just felt, I felt like I was going on for so long when I was singing it. I was mm. like, oh, this is going on for so long. I need to show. And then I ended up basically cutting. The song was like five minutes. I got mm-hmm. it down to like three minutes something, right? Because it felt there was no need for it. I was like being indulgent in this. There's same... no need for anything. Though. No, yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but it felt like in a way I and wasn't, wasn't I wasn't enjoying it in front of people because I was mm, like this okay. feels like drawn out this feels like oh, it, 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 so that part of it I want to be able to enjoy singing it like if I yes. went in front of people right, and I just sat on yeah. ah for five minutes yeah. the embarrassed I would personally for my taste I'd feel embarrassed doing yeah. that so I, that's not going to give me an enjoyable experience so let's mm. say when I was when it felt like it was going off, I maybe I felt embarrassed that it was going, and I couldn't mm-hmm. take it. Like in a conversation, yeah. If there's too much silence, I'll be like feeling the silence, like because that's my that's my personality, that's mm-hmm. my taste, whatever. <laughs> so um, so when we when we're when, but when we're aware, I think I think being self aware and analytical is so like I think self awareness is the key to life uh, for me personally because that's where all the growth is if you're yeah. not if you're not because you can only even and even if you're aware of stuff like I'm aware of some bad habits I have but uh, you know I still still will have uh, <laughs> too many coffees or I still whatever but at yeah. least I'm aware and like, you know, there's something there's <laughs> the, something like, that's such a millennial thing yeah. to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm aware, but I don't give a shit. Yeah, like, exactly. There's nothing I can do about it. At least I know it's there. Yeah. Um, but then, so with the creative work, then you described the so there's like the, there's the there's just the writing, then there's the the editing, and and just kind of getting pulled into certain words, and then maybe determine, and then maybe sometimes you'll have a more complete idea when you go to write as well. Yeah. Let's say. But like, do you yeah. feel like you could? This is what I feel. I feel that I could like. I could write a song. Mm-hmm. I could write. No one could stop. I could if I if you stopped everything right now and I just worked for the next few hours. I could write a song. Mm-hmm. Like I could do that, and I don't need yeah. to wait for things to be just right or whatever. Or I could yeah. actually dictate. Like, could you? Do you feel yeah. that you could just start writing and like? Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's definitely times when like an idea already emerged or something like you or you were like already inspired or you already had like a word or a phrase in your head. Like, yes. I, I for me it often starts with like like a half sentence or something that just pops into my head <laughs> I don't know mm. um but um I could also like this is why I like the blackout poetry as well you know it's like where you take like something I don't know some article or some poem even or a song and you literally you just go like you caught like these parts yes. and then you have a new poem and like it's a it's, remix yeah, but it's just like, I mean, we all work with words anyway. Like, you're not stealing anything. You're making something. And I like doing that with my own piece yes. as well. It creates a new poem because it it changes the meaning completely. Um, so this is where like, you yeah. pick on? Like, this is some, like, this is, for example, something if I, like, really, if you were, like, you know, like, you have to write something now in, like, 30 minutes. And, yeah. like, you know, I would probably, I would, I might do something like that. And I would be, like, it's probably not going to be too bad, yes. you know, because I'm working, like, with a core set of words that i can rely on to be already good yes. you know um so it's a, this is it's an this inter- sounds so calculated no 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 but, <laughs> but it, um yeah so this was one yeah the yeah. blackout poetry is really interesting um because it reminds me of like a uh, remix and songs yeah. or uh, sampling like when people... but we we do this all the time even subconsciously like we're yes. influenced but everything we have heard or read before Thank anyway you, yes. you know because 
what, like, where you do you draw the line? Yeah, you, you know the English influenced. language, or you know yeah. a language, you know yeah. words, you woke up at a particular time. Exactly. Where do you exactly. draw the line? You've yeah. read other people's stuff. Maybe exactly. everything you then everything you write after that. Yeah. Maybe you just because you're not aware of it, but the fact that you can you're thinking in a particular way. If yeah. you were born into the universe right now. You'd just be like, blah, 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 blah. you wouldn't have words. You'd have whatever you'd have. And yeah. then the whole canon of like literature would not be known to you or whatever. Or yeah, yeah, philosophical yeah. thought or, or the cultural ideas of the time. I think people don't understand. It's one thing, even what I described about music earlier, language, everything is, it's like, an, it's, I think art and time are kind of fundamentally linked. I think even if they're, fun, like no matter what, in a billion years, the art would would be different in that context in a way. I just Obvi- I, yeah, I, but art is linked to your thoughts, and thoughts are like prompted by the time you live in. Yes, know? exactly. But like, for part of me, for a while, there's some timeless like, just just the more I think about world and reality, like the more I see how our concept of time and even our concept of memory and what we like let's say we think about when we have this podcast right right now we're having the podcast we're here when we think about it in a week it's gonna it's gonna be di- way different than what we thought and when we were thinking about what it was going to be like it was way different than what it was and we've like so i'm just more now i'm just like i just need to do the thing and not worry about really what's going to happen with it because mm-hmm. it's never going to be the same and then yeah. when i look back at it all that really matters is that we had this like for us, when we talk about this, like, oh, we did that podcast and it was cool. Mm. Hopefully we had a good experience <laughs> doing it. That's the only fundamental thing. And then if we can if we can just carry that that feeling into the future, because that's all we'll really have. Because mm. in the future, all we'll have, we won't even be thinking too much about it. We'll be like, oh, we'll think about it. Oh, I remember that podcast. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, what about this other thing now? Oh, shit, I need to do this. Blah, 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 blah. And it yeah, disappears. Yeah, yeah, so sure. it's all so transient in a weird yeah. way. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But I do want to kind of now get into some of the poetry stuff. Um, so you said here on the 9th of March that you hate people. No, that's it. No, it is. This doesn't do. Good to show that the, was the, yesterday. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> the trial of Addie Peter. Addie Peter. Oh, I need to stop saying Peter's. Anyway, a great line that I really liked is, um, is I have the whole goddamn world uh, to walk over and more, right? Mm. Because it's so interesting. I remember, because let's say I walk out my door now. I could, there's a beach like that's like a minute or two away from mm-hmm. me. I don't own the beach. I don't own the sea. I don't own the land outside, but I might as well own it. You know what mm. I mean? I might as well own the beach because yeah. I can just walk to it and I can mm. I can walk. I have the whole goddamn world <laughs> to walk over. It's such a powerful way to realize that being alive and to live in a hopefully mm. democratic society where there's lots of public ground or you, you can walk places and it's yours <laughs> yeah. that's what it feels like to me when i'm on a, I, i'm like i don't need a ma- i just need if i have a bed i can go out and i can enjoy the beach just as much as if i fucking owned it it's so interesting mm. so what did you you just i think you're just like i think it was like in sort of um response to it's like i don't need like like, don't you know I have the whole goddamn world to walk over bitch <laughs> it was a kind of <laughs> no, she didn't say that uh, <laughs> um, but, uh, let's do that next time <laughs> yeah yeah I'm just try it no, it's, it's interesting I, I, um, I love what you're taking from the line as well it's like such a more optimistic way of reaching into it than what I what, the way I perform it because it's for me, it's a flip on um, the f- um, the what do you call it idiom? I don't know, like the mm. phrase, like to walk over somebody. Oh, like you know, like and I flip it, like you know, like speaker having felt walked over. Well, she has the whole goddamn world to walk oh. over. You know? so it's like the empowerment from like you know one action of one person toward the other, and then flipping it to to like like the like like a complete empowerment yes. of like like the whole world you know so interesting yeah because it's it's so interesting that uh when you write when you can when you write in particular words or particular sentences that are that are kind of th- that are open to interpretation or whatever because if, if you write them if you write too direct let's say then there's no real room for other interpretations like if i say the table was brown it's like well it can be different shades of brown, it's maybe. Shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I you know what I mean? Interpret it. Yeah, like it's like it's not really that. It's like and there's something. What what is it about poetry or like speaking to like the 
because what's the what like, Emma had a real good point because I was talking about what's the difference between saying that you're sad or making a poem that you're sad and so he was like saying that you're sad is telling someone how you feel but poetry is showing them how you feel yeah exactly and that's like yeah and making them feel it yes, like, and making them or like um like, like opening a space to participate in that maybe or something like that because in it's never sad like you if you read it i mean it's kind of this concept like show versus tell as well like making somebody understand or feel yes. something versus just telling it like if i if i if i tell you there's no emotion connected to it right so if you read in a book he was sad right? yes but um then you might or like he was depressed or something and then you try then you don't say that and you try describe it always takes more space to to actually like show versus like because telling is always like a summary yes so you, you can be like it was the, the third day in a row he didn't get out of bed you know, mm, yes. This morning he was thinking of you know if you know brewing the cup of coffee was even worth the effort, and then you go on from that and like yes. the person reading it would like would be like fuck you know like it's fucking depressing. Yes, without saying it because it's like yeah show yeah show versus tell like that's like a real kind of uh, yeah and truism, like yeah and like this is story. yeah and of of course you know sometimes you just need to say it as well like yes. it's not like telling us bad like it's really no it's not bad it's just, it's just like you can't it's just good you to, do uh, do it as like i do do it as well you know it's not yeah yeah but it is um there is a kind of like the poet or the because putting together words in a particular way to elicit certain responses or to shine light in a particular place in the world of like ideas or mm. or thoughts or emotions or feelings it's such a it's such a strange thing um, to be able to do in a way and to give kind of sort of grandeur to to the whole to the whole like things can things can be so mundane, but the poet can can remove the mundan mundanity or whatever, like and just make it grand. Like everything can be so grand, I think, in a weird way. I actually think the poet is just picking up on the mundane and like point i mean everything well i'm yeah. not, <laughs> like, I don't know, like everything is i'm just gonna say it everything is mundane like there's nothing i mean right i'm not this in, is one of her poems i'm, I'm not a nihilist no, or yeah, anything yeah, yeah. you know but um i don't know like it's not about like making things special or i mean at least not for me it's not about making things special or beautiful or whatever like to, for me poetry is communication as well and first and foremost it's not even about anyone else like it's a selfish thing in a way yes that it's like i i write because i have to like i you know like i can't leave it you yes. know it's just like a thing i do and um it's it's like therapy as well like you know, I have a lot of thoughts. I, I need to get them out. It's so much easier that way. Like, for example, when I said, like, I was in work, I get, like, ideas. I need to. I always have a notebook or a post-it or something there. I need to jot it down. Otherwise, it's stuck in my head. I can't work. Yes. You know, so I need to get all of this out, you know? Yes. And, um, and it helps. And, like, this is also, like, I think, like, sometimes people also get the impression that, like, you know, loads of my poetry is, you know, quite dark or sad mm. or something. But like, and then I had one time after a show, um, a woman came up to me and she was like, oh, can I give you a hug? Or, you know? Yes. And I, I didn't know what was going on. I was like, all right, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, maybe she needs a hug. And mm. then, but then afterwards I understood she thought I needed the hug, yes. you know? And then I was like, right, her intentions were all right. Yes. You know, like she was being compassionate and stuff. But I think what people sometimes don't understand is like, I would be in a really bad place if I didn't write these poems, yes. you know, but I write them, so I'm all right, yes. <laughs> you know. I think the, like, yeah. the fact that you're get, speaking about the things means that you're trying to transcend it then in a kind of way. Yeah, it's way. just a way of processing and understanding yes. and like we all feel like, I don't feel a need to process all my happy thoughts so they don't end up on the yes. page, like, you exactly. know what I mean? And, it, and then it, so, some people like love, you know, like writing comedic poems or doing comedy yes. or things like that but it's just like people express themselves in different ways and use art as a different channel yes you know? a vessel for different um tools yeah. or, or principles or yeah. practicalities but i think the when you when i so i don't look at things as like i don't really look at things as 
I feel I when things give me a certain energy, like a beautiful film, it might be sad or whatever, but I just see beauty, mm. let's say, as my kind mm-hmm. of fundamental. And then, uh, like, if I have a nightmare, I don't really, I, I notice this myself, I just, I'd be describing a dream to somebody, mm-hmm. and they just go, that's a nightmare. But I never looked at it as a nightmare, I just oh. think it's like a, dr- a dream. Uh, yeah. I don't, I don't distinguish between the nightmare and the dream. Interesting. Even, so, yeah, it was, so, it was interesting for me to, yeah. to see that, because I, I, I just don't see e- that. Even if you were shook by it? I'd see it as a dream, it's a dream, like, it was, yeah. it's in the context of a dream, I think saying nightmare yeah. is a... Uh, I just don't get it. I just don't understand. For me, anyway, and I have, I mean, I've had dreams, I mean, the most <laughs> intense dreams, I'd say. Yeah. Uh, no to bad, not really, but like, <laughs> I've had some crazy stories that I won't get into now, but you, people know uh, <laughs> who probably listen. But the, the point is, is that, like, the world can be inherently, like, there's, there's, I think beauty, I don't know why, it's hard for me to pinpoint exactly what beauty is, but in the sadness there's still beauty in a way and i think poetry can shed a light on perhaps by giving it the gra it's like yeah i think there's definitely beauty in the honesty yes yes and in the vulnerability like i yeah maybe in the sadness as well it's hard to i think you can find like aesthetics or beauty anywhere really like Mm. i don't know and I, i think it's um um i don't know just like a good way to go about life as well just like try to see you know the beauty in everything yeah yes. i don't know because everything can be the fact that like in this in the sadness there can be there just is there is if you just look i've got a nice little magnifying glass but uh i'll get on to some other lines um yeah, perhaps. I, I wouldn't glorify things though like no, i don't glorify. know yeah like I don't know. Like, I also don't like, like, the artists who, like, revels in, like, the negative feelings. Like, I also, I mean, this is a totally different topic, but, like, I don't believe in, like, the tortured artistic soul who needs to be miserable. Yes. To, no, def- you can be in a perfectly fine, balanced place and r- write a, you know, a whopper poem about yes. something that's maybe sad, you know. I don't believe in, like, the, you know, the, the drinking writer or, like, needing Sad, to be on drugs to be for always that. always in a bad place. But yeah, no, definitely there's not. There's no, like, It's a very harmful trope. Yes, there's no actual tropes with creative work. There's no absolute truisms mm. that are true, that requ- that are required for creative work, I think. You know what I mean? It can be any kind of amalgamation, and why not um, start from a point where it's not destructive or your well-being isn't... Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's like anyway. So well, I interrupted you. No, no, no. <laughs> but actually, the point of because when you said Whopper, that triggered something in me because it's funny when you're because I I hear your voice. Uh, I just I loved uh, I listened to a lot of Eckhart Tolle many years ago, and uh, he has this really beautiful uh, German accent. Mm. Um, I never I, listened to him. Yeah, I don't it's know. so inter- But yeah. when I hear you, that's why I think I gravitate towards your words so much. And it that was part of it as well as the words, but mm-hmm. it was just. It was the accent because I've been because <laughs> no it just adds uh, for me obviously with my taste or whatever, um and my experience with that with that accent uh, it added more to it. But when you say words like grand or whopper mm. or uh, just like words that you've picked up like Irish words I suppose like grand like when you say gr- it's like in your Germanness it just feels uh just like this juxtaposition between yeah. words like grand yeah, for sure. and. Uh, and like, <laughs> and like, like we described, like, because grand isn't really di- as direct. It's like, grand is really kind I of. I know, and it gets into the mindset as well. Like, yeah. I, I had a friend me- messaging me, me the other day, and um, he was worried about something. I didn't know, like German French, and um, but okay, I said German. We actually write in English anyway. So <laughs> like, I answered, like, it'll be grand. And afterwards, I looked at the message. I'm like, what the, what the, you yes. I'm like, it'll be grand. It'll be grand. That's like, not advice. It doesn't mean anything. Like. You know, but like at the same time, it was going to be. So like, it, <laughs> like it wasn't, it wasn't, I was, you know, I think it did what it, what I wanted it to do. Yes. Like, that like, it gave like the perspective of like, you know, don't be stressing about everything. Like, you yes. know, like. But it summarizes it. Yeah, like exactly, but like at the same time, it's like this is so Irish and it's this is so Irish. Vague. Like I would have never said this like four years ago or something like that. That's so funny because um, yeah. I just noticed it's because it is. It's such a. It's one of the great for me. 
it'll be grand like sure that's that's grand it's yeah. a, it's such a, for me I love the word because there's like a sense of ease with it like yeah but yeah. it is so vague like, it is very open. and it's just yeah. interesting when you pick like oh sure, like, I don't want to I don't want to impersonate like a terrible German accent myself no please don't no no please no that would be la- <laughs> that would be podcast over but yeah. uh, then with um, just with the, the ashes of a dream then um, I love this because this is the one now where, where time kind of comes into it because I think we were talking earlier not on the podcast, but um, like words are, are playing with words in the abstract or playing with time in the abstract is the only place we can kind of manipulate time in a weird way. Otherwise, it's just like a, a constant uh, push. Like it's always on. We can't really stop time. We can't. It, it's it, In the abstract, though, when you say things like the, pres- the present burns my skin, it's such an interesting. Uh, th- that's just the first like note about time, let's say, in this one. Like the present burns my skin. Like the present, like this moment, like this, the present as it presents itself is is like, is unbearable in some weird way. Mm-hmm. And I think then when you have this great line, that I, like even if the more I think about it, the less I understand, but like future happiness has turned, uh, did we talk about this in the podcast? A little bit in the beginning. Yeah, the I future think. happiness uh, yeah. has turned past tense. It's like just that, the... It's like, just, it's just, it's just, it's just the juxtaposition between the two, the future and the past. Like when you, when you bring, it's like when, when movies bring time travel into it, it just mm, adds that extra dimension or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think like if people understand straight away what it means when, when I say, I mean, I mean, I actually don't know if they do. <laughs> but like, it's like, you know, like you had an idea of something that was going to happen and now it's not going to happen anymore. Yes. So like without it ever but having the... been realized in the present, it's already like some, like, you know, like the potential of it happening has just been taken away. But now it's past tense. So now, but, se- but this is what I'm saying. It's like an idea of like in the past, it there was a time when it was still possible that this might happen in the present not yes that that's the thought behind it like nothing more complicated like <laughs> it yeah. just be i can't I, even even when you describe it <sighs> like the future happiness is an idea of the past yes the future happiness is an idea of the past i just think when you say past tense like it's like like it's like i will go somewhere I did go somewhere mm. like that's past tense okay. for me so I understand so like past tense in that way that you're describing is is like the fundamental ethos or spirit of past tense like if you look at past tense there's like maybe a grander um it fits in like a, a bigger definition that's just past like it fits in the past box let's say mm-hmm. and then there's different amalgamations or ways of describing the past and maybe past tense is is in is in that kind of um I don't know if you've ever um looked into uh like deconstructionism or like in, as bitch. a philosophical a sort of bitch, idea, yeah. but it's really cool um it kind of made me very nihilistic when I first got to grips with it so if you just imagine every like this is my this is a basic uh Basel Breed interpretation of it but if I say uh oh what's a table like oh a table is a structure that that has like you can put things on it's like oh what's a structure Oh, structure is like something in the world that takes up sp- what matters. Oh, what is this? What is that? Right. Mm-hmm. So you n- never, ever with words get to whatever the fucking thing is. Right. It's all just it's not real. Like everything is underpinned by definitions of other things mm-hmm. that aren't the thing. So it's all these pointers. Right. That are pointing yeah. to this and pointing to that and pointing to that. So when the deconstructionists like they use that as a way of me it, it's just my understanding of it like it, it's like pulling the rug from under you mm-hmm. like that sense of of knowing anything gets re- like kind of pulled away because then you can just say well nothing means anything yeah in a weird way i think i'm going about way more pragmatist about these things like i think even in philosophy like the um kind of the i don't know the, the I don't, topic or field I was kind of gravitating towards was um more like towards psychology like cognitive science in a way so where like the philosophical theories kind of um intersecting with experiments you can actually do in psychology or physics yes. you know um like looking at i don't know neurological patterns or whatever you know but um like i don't know like in a way like i, I don't think about language in such an abstract way like obviously like 
when you start thinking about it, it's so abstract. It's so yeah, crazy. Yeah. I'm like, I was walking down the street one day and I was like, all of us have names. <laughs> <laughs> and like, people just give them to us. I don't, anyway, I don't, such a anyway strange thing. it is, it was, I, I was having a strange day. But um, oh. in the end, I, I think it's, um, it's like we talk to communicate, right? Yes. Like I'm trying to communicate with my poems. And mm. um, it's like, that's, you know, not more and not less. Like it's th- that's just what it is, you know. And I I wouldn't want to try like tear it apart too much. Like we refer to this as a table, and we you know we we can describe it, and we can like take issue with the description and whatever. Like in the end, we put the cup on the table, <laughs> and it's you know, yes. and like the surface holds the cup, and like you know, and this is kind of the way I think about it, and like um like there's I was talking about like the cognitive science and stuff like there's um. Uh, what's it called um like this is a percep perception thing so it's, it is like philosophy of mind but this was written by an ecologist slash psychologist and it's called the theory of affordances mm. like the table has the quality it's like a put on ableness so like you can place things on it yes and like it's it's the theory about it's an ableness yes i yeah. get it yes and it's like the theory of like uh, like Functional. animals like oh, we are sorry. the human animal in his you know yes. um, description or theory whatever who like move through an environment so it's understood as a more as an ecological thing you know and then the world around us is like you know like enabling us to do us or but it's also what it affords us to do you know like you can think about the world as a kind of a function like that it offers for specific entities that move through the world yes. like for example like you know like a monkey can climb the tree you know and then there's a bird that can like fly there you know yes. they can't really climb it you know and then it's like a different affordance like to the bird like the tree doesn't afford climbing or like the i mean the bird can't fly maybe yes. a bad example but um you know things well, like that bird. so it's more about the practicality it's like thinking about it like all right like we can like abstract from everything and like go completely crazy you know but like in in the end you know we like sit at the table yes yeah i I, I, I can't remember where i was going with with, with, um, the question but like with that line for example like i would just explain it with like um like the i mean present would be like i i do think you know this is gonna happen or like i mean future i do you know like I do think this will happen or like this will happen or whatever past I did think that will happen so it's just oh, turned so it's just th- that's I like am the, going to be happy and then that I am going to be happy or like has but or like, future happiness no isn't... it's like I think I'll be happy and then I thought I'll be happy mm, that, and but that, future yeah. happiness isn't just it's like more than an idea well, it's an anticipation. I mean, we have anticipations, right? I mean, this is, you know, this is about grief, like the whole yes. poem. So it can be about the grief of losing a person, like through death, you know, or like through a separation or through maybe being apart or like losing a friend through a fight or whatever. And it's like the anticipation of like, you know, like this friendship is going to last. Yes. And then like obviously you're not thinking about it every day you know you're not gonna be like oh you know like we will be friends in 10 years you know but like you're still assuming it in a way you know you're still assuming like all right like you know like next week i don't know we'll go to the park i don't know yeah whatever it is you take for granted that you're not gonna be it's just just like kind of implied you just like it's implied yeah yeah and um, so, like in a way, maybe it's not a thought of yours, but why well, it is it is a it's like um it is a thought. But you know? so this is interesting because just on this t- like so when we say future assumption, it's an assumption. But yeah. is the future what happens in the future, or is it the presumption of what will happen in the future? So when we say future happiness, are we saying that that future happiness? So let's say <laughs> this is so fucked up, right? But if I am here now, right, and I, is the future something that already will definitely happen? Or is it, it's it's not just the idea of it, it's the actual thing that happened in the future. Mm -hmm. So when I look back, so this moment here, yesterday, I could say that there's a, even though I, I don't know if it'll happen, 
but there was a real future mm -hmm. <laughs> where we were sitting here in the sitting room in a weird way. Mm -hmm. So in a weird way, it's like the future happiness was an actual tangible. Yeah, and now it's not tangible anymore. Like it yes. could have happened. No, but like, not even that it could have happened. And, and now the potential is like taken away, you know, like. I think it's, it's hard. The we're, word we're, future now is messing with me because I think it's like. um. I mean, it's just the potential. Like, future is just a potential. Like, there's no thing. But that's a prediction. Like, a prediction about the future exactly. is a potential. But no, the future is the future. No, the future is going to turn present. There's no yes. thing like the future. Like, but like once it's happening, you're in the present. Yes. Like, the, you know what I mean? But then, yes, I know what you mean. <laughs> but my brain is... in my brain. Anyway, I just think it's interesting. Like, it's an interesting idea. It's like... Is the future what we predict to be in the future or is it the thing that happens when we reach that point in time in the future for definite that did happen, even though we can't really predict it? Like we can't actually predict the future. We can make pre we can make predictions, mm -hmm. but the actual future itself is something on that is always remains unknown yeah. to us. Yeah. But it is something that does happen eventually, but it'll never be known to us. No. Well, anyway. <laughs> time travel with Annie Peter I don't know I would just say like you know once once you know in the present you arrive I mean the you know I got the train here today like maybe there could have been no train today for some reason you know and but like you kind of I break this I'm breaking the table anyway but um, like you you know once it turns into the present moment then you kind of have your answer of maybe what could have happened you know like for for example now if we if if we I mean this is like obviously from my speculation and as, yes. you know opinion whatever but um you know like there were like so many outcomes of like how anything could have Unfolded. you know yeah exactly or like what could have happened or something um yeah I mean probably also a, a couple of things that were like, pretty unlikely to happen. yes <laughs> um but um in but the end something's gonna happen right. But how does so now I I don't want to get too bogged down on this right because I'm just having fun playing with the idea. Really. Yeah. I'm not like that's why I just love playing. I'm happy you did. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Uh, but just so how the relationship <clears throat> between you before you got on the train, although that now is in the past, that moment was in the present at some point. Mm -hmm. To that relate the relationship between them points now. Mm -hmm. So. From the pa from that point in the past, it this that was the actual future. That past, we can say, this what I mean. The past and future. This like, is we the can thing say of that definition. The, yeah, though. we can say the past definitely happened. Can't we? <laughs> like if I right, if I drop this, <laughs> I right, I drop the I pen. Mean, time is relevant. Now, like, I don't the know. past, I this know. I definitely dropped the pen in yeah. the past. I mean, I know what you mean, yeah. But so is there that same definite with the future? That's what I'm. I'm trying to, like, is the future what happens at that point in time when the clock ticks to that future moment? Or is it a subjective... I, I think where, I mean, the, I think where we disagree or where we maybe not on the, on the same page is that um, you, th you think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you think about it quite linearly. Mm. So you're like, you know, it's like you're drawing a graph and like this is past this is yes. present this is future and it's like literally a, a, like a, a point, point that will pass it's eventually. like a point exactly for a point in the future but like this is why I, why i keep honing down on the point that like there's no such thing unless it happens yes you know like it literally doesn't i mean i don't know i mean probably i mean you know i'm not a physicist and time is relative and yes. like I, I don't know what's actually you know uh, maybe there's like some kind of loop or maybe there's like multi-dimensional whatever you know like i don't know so uh, really time is so relative like i you know but like from how we experience this i i, I just say that like it, there's like the past of like what we can have like you know recollections of or maybe it's recorded or like we, we know this kind of yes. happened and then there's the present and then the future we ex we the way we experience it is that that maybe we can have assumptions or an anticipation about something that has not yet happened mm. but at some point it needs to be realized in the present moment yes but uh, technically it's just in our heads right yes it's never it's yeah. always in front of us i mean us. of course there's like some continuity and we kind of you know like 
made the experience that the sun will go up the next day or, or rather like returning whatever yes um yeah but like there's no necessity to like this specific point like i th- i mean but this is like i'm not um i don't believe in like let's say destiny yes or um fate in mm. that sense or like that there's like a determined point in the future that's going to happen it's not like and some like and this is i think like a belief system you know because there's certainly a lot of people who would say like no 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 there's like um a plan cut out for me already mm. and it's all determined already you know i'm just basically walking through the story that's already there yes. and it's already written for me like, i don't think that way interesting you know so to me like old future is just speculation yes um so you know but this is something people disagree on and i yeah no i'm not yeah i yeah. think a lot i i i just know that i disagree with there um and I just think this is just a fun. I just enjoy this kind of conversation. Yeah. But uh, like, it's like a future is like a carrot on a stick. It's not real. You'll never really catch it. Like, because it's always the future. Well, it's, always, it's always oh, tomorrow. Yeah, I mean... Tomorrow's always tomorrow. Exactly. You know what I mean? But what I'm describing is just like, yeah, if you put it on a graph and you just, dis- if you decide, like, it's not even, it's like you're pointing on a graph, let's say. But just on this point um, with determinism and because uh, it's interest, it's an interesting philosophical idea, really. Yeah, for sure. Uh, with like free will. Yeah, um, interesting discussion. And it's hard for me to see where free will would fit in. Um, like, so let me mm-hmm. try to describe a world where I am thrown into the universe mm-hmm. at a current point of time, at a current frame, and that frame is the next frame in the shot was dictated previous by the previous frame. So in a movie, let's say, like the the, the ne- from the from the so it's just if you slice ta- your life up into frames. And if each frame is is determined by the previous frame, let's say, then it's it's now obviously I feel like I have free will, right? So the feeling of free will is I think mo- the most important. I don't really care if it's not real or not, mm-hmm. but it is hard for me to say that. Like where does where does the like where does like how can things not be determined by the previous frame in in my scene or whatever? You know what I mean? I know what you mean, for sure. Um, like, how do you think about free will? I think there's no free will. That's what I'm saying! <laughs> <laughs> but, like, um, I mean, in a but way... But then, in a way... You're, in, but... I don't know, it's such a... I mean, I've thought about it a lot. It's such a strange thing. Because I think there are situations where you can see quite clearly that, you know, you don't have a choice, you know, yes. in a way. Um, like addiction is one of those things it's like the addict doesn't choose to be you know addicted like you know like they can't do otherwise you know because the the current set of their health brain chemistry whatever is like determining them to act this way and i think it helps sometimes um in a way to uh, with those situations or examples to actually move away from the individual because we're all narcissists yes. you know we're like i have free will like i only do what i want yes. and like it's you know and like i have the power and whatever but like i think when you move away from that and you like you start seeing patterns you're like you know it's not just like the the singular you know like addict that maybe behaves in a certain way like like oh you know like this group of people where this thing happens to they tend to act in this way yes. you know like the human body is affected in such a way by this that you know these this action entails you know and then of course there's like so many influences and of course may you know like maybe there's like the exact same situation but people had different lives yes um, and then they would act differently but they are not identical mm. either you know because their lives haven't been and things like that yes. and but then it's a funny one because we also reflect and then it's like one thing so i used to be like like a hard determinist yes. you know being like you know determined like you can see in some exper- experiments like there's like a you know the neurons fire before they press the yes, button yes. Like, that's enough proof for me but like i don't <laughs> i don't necessarily think like that anymore because there's this weird thing where like if you learn to not be like you know like a slave to your affections like this is something you know from like Hume but like you know there's like pleasure and pain and we react to it and this is a very deterministic um, perspective as well but then there's also the thing like right um I don't know like when I I don't know go to bed very late 
I have great, you know, issues getting up early and, you know, like I can't have breakfast then or I'll be late or something. Mm. But then you because we can plan, you know, like as human beings, we can we have a concept of the future. Like, I mean, we talked about this a lot, like. Um, I don't know if animals have it, like, mm. you know, other animals, like, I don't know. Sure. Animals, but, um, like, some, but a dog will hide some, a bone sometimes yeah. for the future. Um, that's what you think. <laughs> 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 yeah, like the, maybe the dog does this instinctively, you know, like, we don't know. Potentially. We don't, like, but ma- maybe, you have to see maybe the why dog, would, but it buries it and maybe, then goes back to it. Yeah, but these are all, like, actions in the present moment that, like, maybe proved um, oh. advantages in evolution yeah like like mm. yeah I'm, I'm 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 saying but i'm saying that well like we could look at that and say that that's a potential of, of thinking about your future for a dog or what about when a dog remembers somebody i suppose that's not thinking about the future that's just like this, but this is the thing I, I think these are really interesting examples because you can also i mean think about like a squirrel is also burying things for the next winter and mm. stuff um and so, they also so you just think it's just all ones and zeros and it's just pre programmed I don't know. No, I, when I don't. When winter comes in, activate nut collecting process. It could be, is yes. what I'm saying. Yes. Because I don't know. I don't know either. <laughs> but like with the, just coming back to the free will, like the weird thing that we can do because we're aware of the future, we can like, all right, if I put myself in this situation, I know I won't be able to do X because I'm, you know, like technically I'm like, I will be determined in a way I can't do X. Like I know myself well enough. So you maybe don't put yourself into that situation. Yes. And then suddenly, you know, you enable yourself to maybe do other things, you mm. know. But I, I'd say like one thing that we really can't choose is what we like and what we don't like. Yeah. You know, like, you know. But with, with, like, for example... With the addict, like when you, I think when you remove when you remove free will, it offers um, a much more sympathetic lens to look at the world because then you yeah. say, oh, that person, they're not the fact that they are doing this terrible thing or whatever. It was just that every single frame in the movie led up to that point since they were thrown out of the cosmic vagina or whatever that just led them to being this amalgamation of cells or whatever that is doing this particularly bad thing. Mm. So how can we? collectively as society reduce the amount of uh, futures where uh, people will fall into these particular holes mm-hmm. let's say whatever instead exactly, of saying yeah. you're choosing to do like we have to have that, sim- that it offers more of a sympathetic lens because imagine there's this really good example there was this guy who had a, a brain tumor right and it was making him have psychopathic tendencies whatever mm. right and he was gone went on a killing spree and then he told people he for some reason he's like look inside my brain when i'm dead or whatever and he got killed they looked inside his brain they had this big tumor pressing on like the the danger button let's just say right Mm. and then but so he had a visible tumor in his head but we all have tumors in our head it's the it's our physiology it's a it's like the it's like uh, certain hormones are turned up a bit some Mm -hmm. are turned down yeah certain upbringings were whatever all of us have them tumors and they're making us do particular things Mm. whatever it's just like we can we because you could look at him but i don't think people would be like oh what was his tumors fault but just because you can point to the tumor and say oh look at it it's obvious Well, just but then it's not his fault but we all have that in different exactly. ways exactly and i think it definitely helps trying to be compassionate in that way like otherwise it wouldn't make sense i mean if you look at different countries different societies you look at crime rates right and it's not like you know in this particular country people are just more violent yeah you know like this person the same let's say okay i mean with with genetics and dna i don't know like i know there can be some things whatever but like let's say the same person born in a different country different like would have never killed anyone yes so it's like yes you know and then maybe you have countries where just like the the rate of crime is like so incredibly low and like 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 people aren't triggered to do anything or like they're maybe they can prosper in different ways or there's a good mental health system you know yes. like things like that like it's even with you know different systems of prison or something like people can recover yes. like this is what we were talking about earlier like with like starter and stuff like people can change you know like the one person today and tomorrow two completely different people yes. you know or potentially at potentially. least you know yes 
Um, so there's the yeah. op- people can uh, there's redemption, there's rehabilitation. And if we look at it from that lens, mm. like what do we want to do with people we put in prison? Like do we under- what, what's the point in locking them up and not trying to um, facilitate their change into an entity that would be fine for it to come back into society what we blo- we should all want that you know yeah what I, mean? I think of that course in the netherlands they have good prison systems similar yeah they... i think in sweden as well yes but we yeah. are like you could the way i like thought experiments <coughs> like this so imagine you just grew up right and there was just heroin everywhere right everywhere you went everywhere you looked under the pillow mm-hmm. heroin 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 and lighters and all the stuff you need to smoke heroin right what are, what's the likelihood that you're going to try heroin and do it, right? Yeah. So that's an, Now, that's a super extreme example, but yeah. it shows you where the edges... Tile experiments are good exactly. to show you where the edges are. Or you lived a life where every, you just had abundance of education. Every, mm. where you couldn't get away from education. Exactly. Or people were exactly. always trying to find your purpose. Like, always. So it's just exactly. someone else like, oh, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? What do you want to exactly. do? But if you thought about this way, you thought about that way. That's yeah. the extreme case. But that shows you that if you if you play them out it's like okay we we can't we're our products our environment whether bad or we're positive in a weird way and our sort of um our entities that we are i just want to check uh how long we've been going here like okay yeah we're just we're just over two hours oh wow uh which uh, fuck us through by for me. This was your new philosophical podcast. Yes, <laughs> this is the kind of podcast uh, that I've been dying to have. <laughs> I did have a bit with uh, with Phil, but I wasn't, I wasn't on on top of my game. I wasn't as sharp as I could have been. Um, but just before, I suppose we'll start trying to land the plane a bit now. Just with your the gig that you ran there recently, the poetry and beats, mm. um, it seemed to be a, a great success. Oh, it was so much fun. Um, your journey, like, we, there's so much we didn't even get into, <laughs> but like, you're Is that something you want to cover definitely. Um, still? well, there's only uh, really, like, so you're just you're you're on the scene itself. Like, we never even got into like the begin, <laughs> beginning of that. But so I suppose it's just that your current inter- current iteration. That is Annie Peter now. What is what's what what's been in like the like let's say immediate past that's been positive, and what do you pr- what's potentially out there in that uh, mm-hmm. unknowable future? <laughs> 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 um, I'd say like honestly, like twenty twenty two in that regard, like the year I started performing, and it helped me so much to grow as a person, grow personally. Like I'm. I don't like talking in front of people, or at least I, I, I didn't use yes. to, you know, like this is such a strange thing to me still, but it, it just o- opened this whole new world to me. I don't mean the world of performance or gigs or whatever, but personally, like just being able to share and, as I said, like communicate, you know, like the most positive thing that could ever happen like mm. you know like sitting isolated in your room writing it's still therapeutic in some way but like being actually able to like connect with people and share thoughts that's so healing yes so this is like the most po- that, that comes like immediately into my head and like the people i meet of course like the creative people yes. the wholesome scene in general the talented you know like the musicians everything um definitely the like personal goal for you yeah well. like maybe a little bit like more closer to the present you know like the past it's like starting to like pair the poetry with music as well it's just yes. so much fun yeah i love it like playing with the guitarist and the drummer i love it yes it's, it's it's the best like i don't know so hopefully there will be more of that in the future <laughs> yes and what yeah. what from that gig you just did recently yeah what um what was your like when you when it was finished and yeah you were outside or whatever and yeah is there, what did, what was that what 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 was that feeling like what um the next the next like the preceding days like what were your, what were your thoughts about that gig or whatever how did you feel i was about so it? happy yes i was so happy it just went well yes and i'm not gonna say otherwise like it did go well yes <laughs> you know and um it, it was a funny one because before it happened, I had a feeling it would it was going to go well, you know? Yeah. But I didn't want to jinx it in a way. But mm. I don't know, like, because I knew, like, the, the acts I was going to put on, you know, like Fiona, Seamus, Dylan, they are yes. a top quality acts, such, such talented people. Guani and Kieran, like, from The Perfect Mind, who were yes. playing with, like, I just 
I was like, if you know, for some reason, if I forget everything, this yeah, yeah, it'll still be fine. Big, you yeah. know, like I'm like, you know, they can carry that as well, and like so, I was in that regard. Just, I mean, I was nervous before, but I was also calm about that. Yes. And then it happened, and then afterwards, I don't know. It was, I mean, I had put so much energy into it for like, I mean, doing the marketing. Yes. Crazy! I've never done that in Pulling my life. the flyers, before. I see. Yeah, the flyers, the the posters. Like I made the poster as well. Like never done that before, you know, things like oh, that. That's and then, a nice like, poster. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and then like writing emails to um I don't know colleges, being like you know to the creative writing um oh. department, being like do you want to come along? I don't know. Like yes. they didn't answer anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, well, you I, have to. Yeah, you know, have people to, you have actually to came from to, that. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But it was just like a thought that occurred to me. Oh, I, I can, do that. I can take this into my power. Yeah. So I couldn't write for the time I was planning the gig just because it was so much. Yes. So um, it just consumed so much of my time, um, but yeah, yeah. I don't know. And afterwards, I was, I mean, I needed like a day or two <laughs> to just like sleep. You yes. Know? But um. I didn't hit a low or anything. I know you can sometimes have that. And I mean, the day after was definitely, I think I like slept until like 4 p.m. or something. Like it was crazy. Yes. Like I took the day off actually in like, you know, like in my wise planning of the future. I was Brilliant. like, I probably, yes. <laughs> probably need the day off. Um, yeah. And then afterwards, it's a little bit like, I mean, it's a little bit like, okay, what's next? You know, I'm, yes. I'm always kind of like, I'm very ambitious, you know. Yes. So I'm always, you know, trying to take next. take the next step but also i like in just enjoying myself right now so i just want to keep writing keep performing um keep moving in this maybe direction. you know try write a little like um engage in more music not necessarily writing it but just like yeah yeah just playing with the form in a way yeah. um and then yeah just what you touched on there i just don't think th th the emptiness or the hollowness would come from if if you thought that you were gonna get that this was like what was happiness was going to be for you or you thought it was going to fulfill you or whatever it was but for me what I realized like the one thing is that like the future it's always like oh I've done like I released a song I re did an album mm -hmm. like I'm already like oh well I need to start recording this the next album soon or I need to start the next the next like I just think my happiness is determined by what I'm doing I need to be mm -hmm. I need to be like there needs to be something in my my vicinity that I'm actually working towards otherwise mm -hmm. I won't be happy. And it doesn't matter even if whatever success I ever have, I'll still need to be doing something. Because if I ever mm -hmm. stop, if I ever have nothing, then that's where the unhappiness will be in a way. Well, yeah, definitely. If you do it for the success, like if you never do it for the success, you're fine anyway. Yes. Well, success is just more, uh, it gives you more credibility. You can do big, oh, yeah, yeah, more yeah, gigs. Sure. I don't mean to like not aim for success. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I just yeah. mean like if you're... If that's your whole... If this is what makes... If the success makes you happy and not what you're actually doing... Yes. It could be tricky in a way. Yes. Like this, this, this chat has been success for me. Uh, <laughs> like I, I was just so... Uh, yeah. I didn't know it was going to be this good. For me, personally, <laughs> I don't know about the listener. Uh, there was yeah. just so much there. I don't even think... I mean, there's so much we could get into as well. Definitely, um, definitely. But uh, what, yeah, what is... Definitely. Is there anything on the immediate horizon that you might want to point people to? On the immediate horizon? I don't I don't even know. Yes. There's things that haven't been announced yet, so I can't really talk about okay. that. Like, even gigs friends are going to play where maybe I'm part, I can't really plug yes, them yet, yes. which is a bit annoying. But... um. Just keep um, an eye on the page. Yeah, like on the 12th of May, I'll have a gig, but that's in, I think, Tullamore. Is yes. it called that? Tullamore, yes. Yeah. And um, I'll be at the Jazz Festival um, 29th of April to 1st of May in West Cork. Brilliant. Um, yeah, otherwise, I don't know, just, um, you know, check out the updates maybe on the Instagram Annie Peter Poetry yes will be, there'll you know, be links and there whatever will be links else. And you'll be able to find her photos and something and I'm always looking to collab with people so I'm happy for people approaching me musicians especially yes. other poets too spoken word artists yeah uh, and just one thing as well just popped into my head are there any plans for publishing the works in some way I know you have stuff in magazines and other things like that but I'd love like the video like you put out was great. Or like or or just just having your work somewhere where yeah, people um, can actually make a purchase or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. I mean, it would be great to publish like a collection at some point yes. or something like that. 
put up maybe more videos, more recordings. More videos. I haven't really done that. Do you see what Shiv Hickey does? Um, so she does uh, water. Uh, what's her name? Whispers after midnight oh, yeah. or something. So she puts up. She'll put up videos where it's just like a black screen, and it's just the caption. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And it's just like that's what I love, and that's what. Oh, I'm, yeah. Like you have a particular cadence, like she or cadence is the wrong word. Cadence is like how you Intonation. finish something or whatever. Intonation. Um, I love vagabond. Like shout out to vagabond queen, yes, right? Because for sure. Because at the Smith, I always tell her, but her hosting ability. I've only seen her like drips and drabs, but she's so funny. Like I think she does like she doesn't get and she's not even doing it as much. But I was asking me feel the other night, and I was like, she's just so good. She's like, are you fucking asleep? Like she's just, I just love it. Like she's like, come on, we just. But anyway, so for her, she has this like a roaring tone, yeah, and it's like yeah, this yeah, fucking yeah, yeah, like yeah. a pox on both your houses. Like <laughs> it has that kind of uh, spirit yeah. thing. But yours is kind of more. Um, well, I don't like. I don't want to put um, <laughs> subjective experience onto you, but it's just like has this kind of meandering kind of like ah, like hmm. Oh, <laughs> more no subdued, like yeah. And, uh, yeah, no, yeah, but yeah. it's not that. But it's, it has that jerk. Like yeah, people have described it as hypnotic, but I don't know if I would use that word. I wouldn't use hypnotic. Yeah. Um, just something about the accent, and I, it's so interesting. I think this is something that I, because I think our voice our entity in the world is actually also part of the creative work in a weird way like yeah. I wouldn't write when I write a melody that I like think is good mm-hmm. it's because so fundamentally I feel probably that I would enjoy singing it or there's something about it that my voice I feel like when I'm creating stuff now why am I creating and why am I writing a melody like that's like why it has to feel like something I think there's something unbeknownst to us in why our taste is in a particular way and I'm I'm starting to be convinced that like our our style our voice our perception of who we want to be perceived in the world at some weird level or who we perceive ourselves to be in the world is also part of that kind of um that filter or lens that we put onto the work that we're creating in a way <laughs> Fuck. Anyway, I, I uh, just talk, man. I yeah, just I just talk. talk. This is why I hate. Actually, I forgot to fucking say this to you, oh. right? Not hate it, but <laughs> when I seen because uh, I think you're one of the like for my personal taste, right? Like I think you're absolutely brilliant, right? Like as good as for me, I'm not a massive right. Like people might have different opinions about things. I haven't read lots of poetry. I love the poetry of Robert Frost, actually. Like uh, mm. one person, but because he's just so powerful, he has that like um, you know, like I I took the. The, the the less the less beaten path like line or whatever like mm. I took the road less followed and that was more useful to my endeavor but it's not like that right but he has all these great fucking lines right and his way of speaking but when I read your poems I that elicits to me same feelings as I read like someone who's just like who's perceived as great let's say mm. so for my personal taste like and I'm allowed to have a personal taste of course. like you're as good as any poet as that will exist and will ever exist. And uh, from my current understanding of poetry and this frame of mind right now. But when I seen you, right, and I, I was talking Thank to you. you. First of all, it's yes, really and I, nice I, hearing. I, it's br- I, I, just, oh, I just think but you're going to blow the world. You're going to burn. Oh, I don't know. We flame. don't know what will happen. You're going to burn the world with some sort of flame, like with your imprint. But the point is, is that when I was talking to you about this and I get real flamboyant, as you can say, I'm like, mm. <laughs> You just said it's just words. Yeah. And I found that that was that. I'm not trying. That, hmm? I don't know. That didn't feel. I'm not trying to make it like smaller than it is or something. But I'm also trying to, because in the end, that's what it is. Like but in I, the end, that's what it is. I know, and it's hard to take confidence, right? So it puts you on the spot. Yeah, for sure. Like so, it's, yeah. it's hard, and we do, we kind of it's a. I felt, if I'm being honest, I felt because of the power of some of the words. Um, and obviously the time and effort you put into it, hmm. it felt like... Like, I'm not trying to belittle it. Yeah, like I'm quite confident as well. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah you believe it. You obviously like what like you're doing. Like, I wouldn't doing. perform it if I thought it was If you thought it was shit, like, yeah. yeah. But obviously, like, like, it's yeah. hard, like, maybe it was just in the moment to just be like, ah, oh, like, oh, stop. Like, come on, relax. Like, cause I, it <laughs> felt like, but it just felt, it was a bit, like, it was like, it felt disingenuous a little bit to me. Oh, really? Oh, interesting. Like, as a deflection mechanism. In a weird way. Is it deflection and generous? Well, I think sometimes I'll deflect. My mechanism would be not to disregard the... It's, I wouldn't say it's just melody or whatever, but I'd be mm. like, oh, what about... Oh, but you're great as well. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm not saying, like, it's... Maybe it's not... I don't mean, like, you're lying or whatever, but it's like sometimes 
Com- taking compliments, I think, is hard. Uh, and yeah, sometimes respect, yeah, 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 but I don't know yeah, how you feel about that. I'm not like I'm not know. saying you're a liar. But I did say thank you, didn't I? No, um, yeah, yeah. Or, uh, no, you did. <laughs> but I, no, but I, like but I don't I, know. I'm the worst because I just fucking keep going on yeah. and on, and then you're just well, like. the thing uh, is, the thing just... is, the thing is, what am I, what am I gonna say? Like it's, I, I wouldn't say it's it's disingenuous because this is what I do think in the end. Like, I can't make myself dependent on the opinion of the audience. Yes. Like, I'm going to do my art anyway, and I'm not catering to the audience yeah. either. I'm very lucky that this resonates with the audience. But if it's because just words... This is, because this is the way I write the poetry, and this is the way I perform it, and I'm lucky that it lands in a way... In or, any way. Or, or that, like, some some of the pieces do, some do more, some do less. Yes. And like, any and like I do know in a way what I'm doing, but at the at the same time, it's um, it's like I always think there's this one author, um, Rachel Kosk, in my opinion, brilliant. Yes. And I met her just at a book launch, and she was there to like sign the books, and I watched a few of her interviews as well. She she wrote the outline trilogy, very interesting um set of three books um called auto fictions, so, like fiction mixed with autobiography, and um. I came up to her and I I told her, I I can't remember what I said something yes. like about like liking her book and like I don't know if if I said like thank you for writing this I can't remember but I I, I said something and I think she, she I don't know she was just like like oh yeah thank you like I'm glad you like to feel that way yes. or something but I could see that she was detached in the situation yes. as well. Because especially, and like, then I I read a little bit more about her and like, she had a couple of like, not very flattering articles written about her as well. Mm. And like, you can't make yourself dependent on the review or the opinion of like other readers or the audience or anything, because like you're you're trying to create something and i I need to and like obviously it it does mean the world to me when people say that and honestly if i you know i i did play gigs that didn't go well yes you know it's not like every gig is like great i i like i just like anyway but whether people think it's good or not isn't like the final judgment that you are going to keep writing for hopefully not i mean you know like the last couple let's say for example poetry and beads went well like what if everyone would have told me like look at this one or like what if they genuinely like wouldn't have liked it like i don't know how i would have dealt with that yes. you know like i don't know mm. you know maybe i would have dealt with it well or you know like mature or maybe it would have really put me down made me insecure yes. you know like i i will probably play like some gig that might be like a little bit underwhelming it happens you know like things fluctuate things change yes. things are dependent on circumstances so yeah it's difficult for me to um like deal with praise or flattery and these things yes. like um because you know if you buy into it too much it's gonna pollute the air i also don't want to inflate my ego like yes. i don't know it's it's a and in the end i'm you know i do sit down and i i do want to communicate something i want to share something and this is why and this is maybe how we can get to like your darkness and your light as well it's because in the end i do feel grateful that people are listening to me as well yes you know like and then you know i I have people like come up and say like you know like oh thank you like this maybe this piece did that for me and then like wow thank you for listening you know like it's incredible but the way so i just yeah i just want to as you were talking there um just so i can clear the air a little bit i suppose it just hurt it hurt me a little bit because maybe perhaps i had like taken like such i was like oh these these are such powerful words and then for you to say they're just words i was like her, but this is what I mean. I didn't but, need to, like, but, devaluate but no, your opinion yes. or like belittling. No, but it's not even anything. your work anymore. It's not even exactly. you. It's like the words. Exactly. It's like so, the death of the, the author. Because I love the wo- I love words, right? Mm. So it's like you you can't you can't if you say that then like you're like you're like it was like a, a sh- anyway. Let me let me let me just finish on this point for a sec, right? So then, um, but like like what you're saying is so important, like because if you get caught up in praise, I don't really get. I'm a, I have busks for ages, right? Mm. So I'm used to people, some people just hating on me or liking mm. it, right? So I've, yeah, I, I, but yeah, I've never let that kind yeah. of deter me. Sometimes mm. I've seen that there was something in what they said that was good. Mm. Um, I didn't have many too bad experiences, but I had some funny ones. Ahead of, I thought, but fundamentally, if I like the song, right, and it's, put, someone tells me it's good, I'm like, oh, I'm glad you like it. Mm. But like, I really like it anyway. So uh, like the way I see it is, is that 
I already think my songs are really good, right? Mm-hmm. And it's just like if people, if the more I can get people involved, the more gigs I can get on it. But like fundamentally, if I didn't like them, then I wouldn't sing them. And the more if people don't like them, it's like, oh, well, that's not your cup of tea. I get that, actually. But if yeah. people like them, it's like, oh, great. You like it as well. I like it as well. Like, so I can, enjoy, but, for, but for me, all that really matters is like, well, even if someone told me the shit, it's like, oh, well, they're, that's their, they, that's not their cup of tea. It's not their cup of tea or it is their cup of tea, mm-hmm. but it's my cup of tea anyway. So it doesn't really matter. But yeah. anyway. But what, what would you have answered? I think I would have just said, I'm trying to what I say now is just thanks I really I actually really appreciate yeah. that yeah and um, but I was going off I go off too I go too hard like when I'm giving compliments sometimes but you blow me away in so many disrespects so it's like this podcast right if it, it was such a such a gr- honor for me really and I know this sounds fucked up but like <laughs> because so? you've just because you you because seeing you up on stage and reading your words and even your other words um like about the desert and stuff and mm. it's just like it's had such a I've just had such reverence for what you've written, like, and, like, you might see it or whatever, but then to imagine sitting in the room then and getting to talk to that person <laughs> and then be like, oh, my God. So I was, like, I was really looking forward to this, like, as, mm. as just um, as an exercise in, like, me- meeting one of your people that mm. have, like, had an impact on you, like, and, like, there's not yeah. many... Not many people have had... They've, I've had been inspired, but you, for me, mm. like, my person says, you stand out for me, and, like, that's whatever that's just an opinion a subjective opinion so but anyway that's why i was probably just like little yeah. like well she, she can't say it's just words because it's <laughs> like if she says just words then like like no then, but, no 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 but i finished the sentence like i then don't know then but watch. then it's like then it's not worth anything or then it's yeah maybe then, but the whole, uh, that's maybe what you're I mean disregarding the like, whole the whole yeah the whole you're just like fuck the whole thing or whatever no th- i didn't mean but, yeah, it but like that's that. i didn't mean maybe, it like that well, i'm analyzing myself now because i i mean it <laughs> i mean it i like that we are having like this um confrontation like in front of the camera that <laughs> like like to to me it's like this is why i, I also i think i also said it um like in in another conversation um on um, a life in Dublin, like shout out to those guys shout as well. Out. Once yeah. again, another Once shout again. out. Um, it was a great conversation. Um, and um, I think I also said that like I I do describe it because they haven't I think seen me perform before, so I was trying to describe it a little bit. And I said like in the end, I'm like saying sentences to people. I mean, of course, it's like a very minimalist way of describing yes. it. Yes. But like my grammar is pretty straightforward. You know, I don't use fancy words in my poetry. Uh, I like I keep it simple. I I keep it direct. I address people. Um, you know things like that. Like from from a structural level, I'm I'm pretty much you know. I mean, you most of the sentence structure is really just like you know subject verb object. You know, it's like yes. it's like pretty straightforward. It's like, like not meandering. You yes. know? And um, so of course I I put more into it. Like I want to be honest i want to actually say something and as i said like it means a lot to me to be actually sharing this otherwise i would just write for me and in a way i don't know if this is like the i I don't like calling it like the narcissism of the writer or something because i don't think that it has to come from a place of like self-praise that you like want to put your work out there i think it's like a very human thing that you want to share you know you want to share art, you want to share your words, your painting, your music, whatever. And like, you take great pleasure from like other people enjoying this so, so much. Yes. And like, it's so fulfilling for me to see it resonate with other people. Mm. Like, I can't compare this feeling to it's, it's the best. Yes. I can't compare it to like, fuck sex, fuck everything. Like, this is the best feeling, yes. you know, just to connect to people in that way. And, you know, in some moments like see like you know like there's a few particular moments i'm thinking about but i kind of want to keep them to myself yes, yes, you yes. know it's like my my little treasure my little, yeah <laughs> um, but um yeah so but it's out of my control like it's not yes. not that like i don't know what i'm doing but like you know like it resonates it takes two parties i don't control the other party you know so like in a way like i'm the one talking and then it resonates it needs the, the one 
it needs you yes. as well for example like it it is words yes in, in the end like i don't know if i'm but going on about the no 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 yeah, yeah. it makes no sense but i just want to wrap, kind of try and wrap it up yeah, by yeah, saying yeah, yeah. you don't owe me anything you don't owe anybody anything right and I'll, that's yeah. just first and foremost right yeah and then there's a part of like when you're talking about the fact the reason why i think it feels good when when things resonate is because you there's obviously art or stuff in your world that you've ex- that you've consumed that has made you feel something yeah of course and, right so you know what it's like to be inspired by something yeah. right and the fact, right, that you put time into something, that writing something, mm. and the artifact afterwards resonated with people that gave, and you could, you know what it's like to be, have that feeling. That's what I think gives you the, that feeling of, um, like, oh, this is cool that they liked it because, because I, it makes the, the endeavor worthwhile in a weird way. Like the fact that I put time into writing this thing that I liked, and then turns out, oh, other people liked it. And then you're, con- it's connecting. Yeah you're connecting with not just like the person, but you're connecting with humanity as a whole. Like they're just a, they're a, a, a scapegoat for, or like, you know, uh, a representation of, of uh, many other people, not just Maybe. that one person, potentially. Yeah, who knows? Potentially. But yes, but anyway, connect with humanity. Yeah. Um, uh, but it's not even about liking, I, I mean, like sure, I mean, people like, well, like half the time I'm making them cry, you know Yes. <laughs> like it's like a, yeah, but like, it's not like entertain entertainment necessarily. I don't know. Anyway. It's energy. I think that's fundamentally. It's like it could be because energy, and then it could be a uh, happy energy, sad energy. But a, a oh, yeah, sad film will make me. I'll feel an impact of that. Impact. Yeah. Impact is maybe a way of describing it, and it could be a positive. Because I think having the when things have a sad impact on me, especially there's a film called The Whale. And uh, Brendan Fraser, mm-hmm. he won the Oscar for it. Mm-hmm. Plays a six hundred pound uh, man and. Oh, it's yeah. such a sad fucking story, but it's so beautiful. Like I love, and I love performance. I love movie yeah. performance. Like I'll always seek out like, anyway, Oscar winning performances, or whatever. Um, but anyway, so I just want to say that like, for, yeah, you don't owe anybody anything, and um, the onus is like, but yeah, I suppose when you just, it's just like, oh, thanks, and then, well, that's for me anyway. But I didn't mean in the dismissive way. No, no, I didn't. Yeah, no, no, I didn't. I just thought like, I, didn't, I didn't want to dismiss your reaction. No, it wasn't my reaction. Uh, it was just like the fucking word, like the fucking you can't like for my I, obviously, but I shouldn't have. Um, I was just thinking, ah, does she mean that? Does she mean it's just words? Yeah, I didn't mean it. But then, what's the point? To connect with people. But then they're more than just words for me. All right. Bit away. Fundamentally, you could say they're just words. <laughs> but for me to say they're just words, then it's like, well, then. I think my intention behind saying that as well is to, I think people have a have a tendency to to like blow things out of proportion yes. as well. Like um. Especially me. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I. That's the whole podcast. Oh, like. Um. No, but um. I don't know, like people sometimes like put people or artists, especially like on on pedestals. And like, this is something I really, truly don't believe in. I think people are just people and like they have the issues, they have their flaws. I know my flaws, all right? Yes. Like, and to me, like, I I don't like to romanticize things. I don't like to idealize things. It's just like how how I go about things. So I try in, in like that those kind of situations just kind of like to bring it back a little bit yes because it's also like if, if even it's even meant as more like encouraging because i remember before i performed which is just like a year ago you yes. know it was like pre-performance and um i saw people perform and i i was like i will never ever be able to like even step on a stage wow. and just like face the the crowd you know like i'm I have so much social anxiety or I used to have so yes. much awkwardness. I still have the awkwardness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, honestly, small talk, really difficult thing for me sometimes as well. Um, always. Anyway. Um, and I don't know. I just want to, like, encourage people with that as well because I think if you make art and, like, even with philosophy, it's the same thing. You know, people are like, you know, like Wittgenstein, Heidegger, you know, Hegel, like all these, you know, confusing um german philosophers yes like I, i'm like if you can't understand it that's probably a flaw in their thinking you mm. know because potentially we're able to understand anything you know you would never think that about math 
yes. you know, everyone is like, yeah, you could be able to understand it if you put in the work. Like, maybe you're not, you know, like, talented in that way, but there's, like, the potential of, like, approachability of, like, you yes. know, because it's, like, inherently, it's understandable. And then sometimes with, like, philosophers, people are like, oh, no, they were so smart, you won't be ever able to grasp it. I'm like, that's impossible. Yes. You know, maybe there was like one genius somewhere. I don't know, you yes. know, but I'm like, I'm, I'm kind of like, no, like if you can't understand it, there's like a logical flaw in yes. their, in their um, concept, whatever, you know. So it's kind of like it's just being intentionally obscure sometimes. Like yeah, it's... yeah. So I don't know. So when I say that it's like, it's, it's just words. I don't know how else to think about it in a way. Yes. You know, like of course I know there's like, um, intonation there's rhythm and there's and I'm quite conscious about all these processes I know my method of writing and stuff like that but I don't even know what I want to say no, I, <laughs> I, I know, don't know. You look, I don't know what I appreciate um I think it's evident is that and so and it was so, just with the way you went on about some of the lines that we got into there's so much depth to you as a person and there's so much depth to like everything's kind of drenched in this depth in a way that I think We'll be pretty evident to the, <laughs> the podcast listeners, um, but we will have. I need to. We need to land this plane in the next few minutes. So, <laughs> uh, but again, I really appreciate you having it on. And if you want, thank you for having me. Honestly, get a delicious a little uh, tasty poem in if you are up for it. Yeah, I'm up after for that, it. unless we're not friends anymore. Last time she be on the podcast. I'll just edit it. So she like, anyway. <laughs> no, I actually. And I was, while we were doing the podcast, I was kind of like, we should do a re revisit in like a year or so. Yes. It would be so interesting. I'll be brilliant. Um, let's do that. Um, all right, I do. I think it, it ties in so well with what we're talking about. I'm going to do your darkness and your light. Um, brilliant. Which is my, um, I always say that, is my um, love letter to the audience. Um, yeah. Shout out. <laughs> if you made it until this point, incredible. Yes. All of so, all of mine uh, and uh, Annie's friends. About the, yes. about the philosophy. Like, Only our friends so, will get this. So like. the three people who made it. Yes. You know, like um anyway. This is for you. <laughs> yeah. I hope I don't forget the lines. I'm actually gonna pull them I up just fun, because yeah. like it's funny because in front of the camera I get more nervous now, so I'm just gonna pull, yes. pull the words Brilliant. up here. suspense your darkness and your light I love your darkness and I love your light even all your flaws shine bright as you're looking up at me eyes fixed on my lips saying words that perhaps resonate I look right back and in your eyes I see myself complicated troubled Brave. I'm sure your sense of humor can be obvious, surprising, intimate. I admire how you get up every time life hits you unexpectedly, yet you shine. Nothing can shake you. Don't you realize perhaps you quiver, but you won't fall. We're all connected through our silly hope and flaws. We're all improvising best we can. Like last time, do you remember? You were so self-centered. You hung up and understood there was no need for the words you chose. Some parts are dark and some are light. The other day you gave up your time to your friend who needed it more than yourself. It was perhaps your most valuable gift because in the end, time is one of those rare things we have to give. I look at you and you look right back at me, it resonates. Even though you're a stranger, something in me says we're all the same fools trying their best. Nothing can break you. Don't you realize I know your darkness and I know your light. Even the lightless parts shine bright. You're here this minute listening. Somewhat less lonely, hopefully. Perhaps your heart dwells on my words. 
I think my words seek out your heart as my metaphors grow slightly less dark. And all I want to say without wasting your time is that while you're looking straight at me, curiosity fixed on my words, I feel a sky of gratitude because you grant me your attention and your time. And all I want to say is that I see you and I love your darkness and I love your light. And I hope you love yourself as dearly as you could ever try. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> yeah, that's it. Annie, Peter, everybody. <laughs> anyway. We will get all the links. Uh, Jesus. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you for so the much. I feel everything. like uh, yeah. this is the conversation, because after listening to some other podcasts or reading some things, I just knew there was more. There was more. <laughs> uh, and I'm glad that... Um, I'm glad, hopefully, this is the platform where you're able to get it out. And I do yeah. want... There's so much. There's more. I'm going to stop. <laughs> I need to actually get a move on very yeah. soon. But uh, look, really, again, appreciate having on. And keep an eye. We'll put all the links and all the stuff. And we'll catch you in the next one.